Ooh, the big nine two. You saved me for a big num- a big round solid number. Yeah, didn't want to give you, didn't want to give you episode one hundred because we're doing the big event for that, aren't we? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, a la, a la, la freshly grounded. Mm-hmm. Salam alaikum after Allah barakatuh. Welcome to Mind Heist episode ninety two. Uh, as you'll see if you're watching the video version, uh, we've got a guest today. Alhamdulillah, three of us here. Uh, welcome, Faisal, to Mind Heist. Thank you so much. Jazakallah um, khairan. I, uh, I feel like I'm, uh, I feel like Mind Heist and Freshly Grounded are like just one family unit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and let's solidify that with a live business deal now. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, listen, Faisal, yeah. Uh, I know you're going to throw all kinds of big numbers at us, but we're just going to have to hold out for the 500k. I'm, I'm, I know you're going to come in at about 400k, but I just got to. I was kind of hoping that you guys would buy in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Faisal, man. Uh, so I guess uh, many of our listeners would, would know you, but um, you know, when somebody asks you what you do, um, because mashallah, you know, you do this as a full time thing. So what do, how do you describe what you do to somebody who doesn't know you? Yeah, I find it quite complex. So with family, I just tell them I'm in marketing, which is true. Uh, it's just vague, but um, my job very much so involves marketing, uh, but just marketing my podcast. Um, but it's, it's hard. But you can't explain to an uh, extended family that you're a podcaster because it's either going to just be looked down upon or they won't understand it and stuff like that. So um, I go with um, like I'm in marketing or I'm in branding. Uh, I do do branding consultancy. And um, as you know, what I mean, so um, I also might tell people like I, I do branding consultancy and stuff like that. So I, I try and keep it vague. But for somebody who knows um, what I do, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I, I just say like, <sighs> if they don't know, if they don't know what I do, I would say mm. that I'm in branding or marketing. Yeah. And if they do know what I do, they don't often ask, what do you do? They just say, do you do freshly grounded full time? And I'm like, yeah. Mm. And like, and the question, the follow up question is always, like, why would that require like full, a full time mm. uh, role? Yeah. And then I have to explain to them kind of the ins and outs of mm. of it mm. all. You don't say that you're like in media or anything. No, but, but I, I don't. I don't see it as being in media, bro. Because the, I, I, if I feel like the closest way to define, if we were to categorize. Um, the role that I have, I would yeah. say, is branding. You know, I'm, I, 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 I brand, I brand, um, freshly grounded. Uh, it's a, it's a brand, and trying to improve the brand, whether that's uh, internally through um, improving our. Um, a kind of uh, workspace, our uh, workflow, um, which is all internal branding. Um, and then externally, obviously, we all know what external branding is like, what the, what the consumer sees. So mm. uh, uh, the closest thing to what I do is definitely branding closer than media. I think media has this um, idea that it's also like uh, reporting and um and going out and creating content and i don't i don't feel like that's what we do we do create content but yeah mm, okay although I, recently I, I had to on google i had to define us as our company and i defined us as a production i think a production house or something or media yeah, yeah. Media that's what I, that's how i would define you because what you do is you produce content now part of producing content is putting it out there and making sure enough people see it right uh, but ultimately your product is the the interviews and the videos and the, everything that you put out there so mm. I, I would say that um definitely and then even when it comes to the live events that is again like producing a piece of content if you like you know so but i guess what you're saying is that your day-to-day is involved in promoting and therefore marketing and branding it basically yeah and, and that's my role internally in freshly grounded as well so i don't focus on yeah. um uh like I've, there's other elements of Freshly Grounded that other people focus on, right? Mm. So mm. I suppose like my day-to-day in Freshly Grounded is working on the um, B2B branding mm-hmm. workflow and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So, so face are like, when you started Freshly Grounded, what was the intention? Was it, I'm guessing, yeah, just knowing what I know about you, that you just wanted to like throw it up there, just, you know, have fun with it and see what happens. You didn't have a big plan behind it or, or was there a plan? 
Yeah, you'd be right. I, I, I didn't necessarily have a big plan behind it. I, I've never had a plan. I, I, I'm too erratic as a person to have, have plans. Um, I, I, I genuinely did. I remember where I was, where I, where I thought, you know what, this thing would work. I was on a train on my way into work. Um, and I used to take the tube, obviously, into central London. And so I, I often would listen to podcasts. And I've, I've told this story so many times, but I, the, the, the long and short of it is that um, I only newly started practicing. And so I wanted to listen to something that wasn't music, but then at the same time, wasn't as intense as like lectures and Quran. And so I listened to sports podcasts and I thought mm. maybe there's other people like myself who, who would like to um, listen to podcasts. Mm. And so let me try and create something relatable. Mm. I never thought about... Um, you. I mean, any, anyone who starts a project would be lying if they said that they didn't dream of it becoming like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. their job or something yeah. so i did think of that but it, it definitely wasn't mm. like oh yeah this is gonna become mm. definitely my full-time yeah. thing I, and stuff like that. I think taking that jump is always really important that's the important part of your story that really inspires me because like yourself i've been listening to podcasts since i was 13 man or 12 like and from all sorts of topics from like all sorts of creators and then it crosses your mind any sort of media that you'll consume or anything that you consume that isn't, you know, that hasn't got a Muslim presence, you know, Muslims aren't doing it or whatever. Uh, you're always like, ah, oh, Muslim community aren't going to be too interested in that. So even if the idea comes to your mind, you're like, I'm not going to bother. But I think the fact that you actually jumped on and you were newly practicing and you just thought, yeah, there might be an audience for this or whatever and went, you know, went through it is, you know, is, is, is really inspiring. There's so many things like that that people can take a jump on, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was think I was, I was actually having a discussion with Omar about this exact thing uh, two days ago. And it, I, I, I just can't remember who we were listening to. Um, but we were listening to a story of, ah, man, it escapes me. It's really going to annoy me. But with uh, some, I can't remember if it was the guys, it wasn't the guys who created Airbnb, but anyway, it was some like big startup. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's just like escaping me, which is so annoying. But it was about a specific person, right? And um, they were talking about this thing about 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 taking the jump, and they were talking about how they went through a phase of like leaving. Uh, oh, it was it was someone who um, left uh, left um, studying, and they were told. Sorry, guys, give me a second. I really have to think of who this was. That was going to bug me. Oh. Um, I don't think I was speaking about this specific person, but this relates anyway. So I'll tell you about this person. There's a guy called, I think, Sal Khan, who uh, started uh, Khan Academy, which is, um, you know, non-profit, uh, I don't know, like billion dollar um, course site. And um, he, again, like uh, had to make a jump, right? Uh, and the point is, is that, you know, we often talk about the ideal solution to start your own side project is you have your job, like I had my job in retail. Um, and then you, so you've got a consistent income and on the side with your spare time, you're, 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 you're doing your side project. Yeah. And at some point you can smoothly transition over when this is making enough money so you can leave this. So you never feel the, uh, like you never go through like a really difficult time. Right. Yeah. And that logically, makes so much sense that's like the ideal solution right yeah. when every story that i've heard including mine that's never been the case the person has had to actually leave this at yeah. a time where it's not comfortable to do so yeah. and then they've had to struggle for a bit and then get get to here and i've always yeah. and i said to omar i wonder why that is i wonder why i've never heard of someone making that logical transition and there probably are some people who who, who have but i do think that there is a, a there is a sense of like okay, now I've left that, I have to go all in. And I think that um, I'm always reluctant to do so because I don't want anyone to suffer financially because of my advice. But I feel like telling people, like, if you're uncomfortable to make that jump, make it. And then, and then, mm. and then maybe something will come out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I guess sometimes you, you're working on the side thing and the, the signs are good. If the signs are good and the trajectory is good, even if you're not where you need to be, that's kind of the, the time to make the leap. But I think, you know, for me, in my uh, journey in business, I was actually very lucky. Like when I look at my friends who always wanted to get into business, but, you know, they, they just still haven't. I think my gift was I was fired from my job. And that forced me to just go full time into business at that point. Right. Mm, Obviously, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't um, uh, you know, I wasn't married or anything at the time. So that obviously made things easier. But yeah, that honestly, that was the biggest gift to me, alhamdulillah, that uh, I was, I was committed from day one because I was like, okay, well, 
no job. I'm not really going to, I just got fired. I'm not applying for more jobs. And they fired me because I was too maybe entrepreneurial in my thinking. So mm -hmm. I was like, look, I guess, you know, this is, this is the beautiful Qadr of Allah. So now I'm fully committed and people who are not fully committed because they're trying to do the job it is very hard, man, to become committed, isn't it? Um, but bro, you said you were going to the tube every day in the tube every day to work. That was a retail job. Yeah. Yeah. That so was you, you never had an office job. I did have an office job before that. So I started, um, I started like doing work for my bedroom at like, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 with, with my brother. And then, so when we were, I think 15, we got our first office. So I did have an office job in terms of, but it was like for our media company that we had, which was like graphic design, web design and stuff like that. But I never had an office job where I worked for somebody else. No. Oh, okay. Good. Do you I, think, I was going to say, do you think that, I mean, it's all hypothetical, but do you think you'd be in the position you are today without your brother? Do you think you would have got there? Oh, no. After a lot, definitely not. Yeah. No, I think that uh, he doesn't get enough credit for it. Yeah. I feel like I am um, anything that's like good that comes from me from business. Again, yeah. after Allah, it's like a 1% of um, the knowledge that Omar has. Like He has like so much knowledge and uh, skill in, in this art that Allah just gifted him with. Yeah. And I can, I like literally like um, piggyback off of that yeah. and just get drips and drabs of it. But then I go 100% with those drips and drabs. This is it. So I... From the vibe I get from you guys, it's like, I know that Omar has had a really great influence on you, but it's also really nice to see that despite the influence and, and you know, the, the guidance he's given you, he's also like giving you the space to grow as freshly grounded. And I'm sure behind the scenes is really involved in advising you and guiding you and stuff, but he's not like sticking himself into it. He's giving you that space to grow on your own, which is great for an older brother to do, you know, so I find that really inspiring. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of my biggest blessings, man, is my old brother. Yeah. You know, the face of there's a book called Attraction, uh, okay? Really, really good book. It's like an uh, operating system for your business, okay? It's really good. But anyway, in that, he's got like a concept of the two uh, leaders in a business. You've got the visionary and you've got the uh, integrator. The integrator is the operations guy, very process driven, very like uh, organized. And the visionary is kind of the, the wacky, um, you know, salesperson, very inspiring the way he talks, right? It's kind of like the Steve Jobs is the visionary. And then there was Wozniak who was the integrator. So maybe you're like that visionary type and maybe, I don't know too much about your brother, but he seems maybe more like that integrator kind of person. Is that true? No, I think he's also even more visionary than me, to be honest. <laughs> okay. But uh, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, uh, I, we have Kareem who works at Freshly Grounded, who he's been here for um, just under a year now. And he's very much so like helped change the game, man. Like in the past year, I think there's been a lot of changes that people would see in Freshly Grounded, even externally, um, that you can pick up on if you really look, look at it. Um, and a lot of that is uh, because of Kareem's hard work and... Mm just like fixing like uh, processes that uh, yeah like someone like me struggles with a lot man like it's a big weakness of mine and it's a really really massive advantage of his so mm. that's really helped mm. I, think I met Kareem actually um a while ago seems quite like quite a quite level-headed yeah. person yeah yeah he's Spanish or Moroccan yeah. Sure yeah, yeah 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 that was him that I met yeah so face of yeah, what yeah, was that leap? Know. Tell me about the leap between, you know, going from the job to actually doing Freshly Grounded full time. Like how many years were you in or months were you into Freshly Grounded? And then like, what was that gap? How big was that gap? Okay, so Freshly Grounded was born, like we put our first episode out in February 20, uh, February 2017 or 16. I want to say February 2017, which means... Um, and I got, I started that, I was at Apple at the time and I left, App, oh, I just said who I worked for, oh well. Um, you're, not, you're not meant to for some reason, but I hope Oh, I think you can, it. you can say it if you've left it, I think, that's yeah, my role. Really? Yeah, yeah, there's some kind of, that's what we have to sign Yeah. Uh, man, you can say um, if you've left. But anyway, I was there, um... So I, I started Fresh Grand 20, uh, February 2017 and I left there, I think, like, April 2017. So I really didn't make it. wasn't It wasn't long before I left. Whoa. I think I might I might have my numbers wrong, but yeah, I think um, two months, bro. 
I think so. Do you know what happened, bro? Let me tell you what happened. Oh, here we go. This is funny. This is funny story, bro. So Broken basically, <laughs> I, so it was coming up to Ramadan, yeah? And I was just thinking, like, I'm, I'm going to be doing eight-hour shifts on my feet during Ramadan in blazing hot central London with people coming in, like, complaining about their phones and stuff. And I thought, I didn't know, alhamdulillah, what happened? So I thought, all right, I... I I, I had saved my holidays for Ramadan, yeah? But you can't take more than two weeks holiday um, at a time, right? Like, even if I've got four weeks, I can't take all four weeks yeah, at once. Yeah, yeah. I think you'd even struggle to get all, like, all two weeks at once, to be honest. But you can, like, if you, you can stretch it, like, if you get it approved by a manager, if you've got a good relationship, you could probably get two whole weeks, right? But at that time, our store was going for a renovation. And so we all got, um, uh, we all got moved to different stores. So I actually got moved to White City in Westfield. Mm -hmm. And what had happened is, uh, and that was around Ramadan, right? And I had saved my four weeks holiday. And so what they did is as a, as a weird anomaly, alhamdulillah, they actually allowed you to take as much holiday as you want because our store was broken down anyway. So they was like, look, if you want, because then all of these other stores are going to have loads of extra staff because our store had 500 active staff members on the floor, bro. Whoa. So imagine... Imagine now, every day throughout the London stores, there's 500 people being dispersed. They don't need them. Yeah. So they said to us, if you've got extra holiday, you can take it all in one go. So bro, I took all of Ramadan off. And so I had it. So what I did is uh, just before Ramadan happened um, was when we were going to have to shift to White City, right? I was going to have to shift, shift to White City. So just before Ramadan happened, I gave him my notice for four weeks time, right? Mm. So I took my four week holiday. So I had four weeks of pay. So I was paid throughout the whole of Ramadan. Yeah. Technically, I was working at White City. Yeah. I was paid for the whole month. And then I, 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 I handed my resignation in, day in, for the day I was meant to return to White City. So I never actually worked a day in White City, although technically I worked there for a month. Mm. And also the advantage of that was that I didn't have to be there for the clap out. You know, like they clap you out. Like, yeah. And I just was like... I I'm an, uh, I am like an extroverted, like attention seeker, bro. But mm. something about that was just like, oh, I don't want to avoid that. So alhamdulillah, I avoided that as well. Mm. Yeah. And, and so how did that happen though, bro? Because I never knew this. Two months between podcast starting and going full time on it. How did that happen? I don't know. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm missing part making of the story. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know what it was? Do you know what it is, bro? I, I didn't go full time on a podcast. No, 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 no. Ah. Oh. Are you bro, with I your brother, go, working with your brother? Yeah, I, oh. but I didn't go full time on a podcast until uh, um, uh, 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 May 2000 and Last week. 19. Right. Okay. Only a year and a half I've been full time on a podcast. Mm. But pod, I, we was not making any money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't yeah. go full time on it, and yeah. so I only I've only been a year and a half, and even even that year and a half, the first two months, mm. even even so, I had a jump from Apple to to Flavor, mm. which is my brother's company, but in the, and which was a struggle because. Flavor was young, so I wasn't exactly on like a crazy salary there. I was doing yeah. customer service and I was like prodding along, right? Yeah. But it, it allowed me to work on Freshly Grounded. That's what it did. It gave right. me the freedom to work on Freshly Grounded. And, okay. and they had, uh, Omar had given me some office space that I could set up Freshly Grounded once a week mm. and then stay, as long as I kind of put mm. it all down and stuff. Mm. And so, um, uh, and so when I finally left Flavor in, so we did episode 100, the live event, right? Yeah. And what that made me realize is that this scope to make an income from Freshly Grounded if we okay. do it in the right way, if we do these live events, mm. if we market ourselves in the right way. And so what I did is, because I believed in it, I decided to leave and go full on because it needed all of my attention. It wasn't because I wanted to not, it, I just needed, it needed my full attention. Mm -hmm. So here you have a problem where you have something that requires, if you had five days a week, eight hour days, you could literally put in that amount of work. There's that amount of work to be done, yes. but there's no return of, there's no income right yeah, yeah. and so i threw my time at flavor that was when i started listening to dave ramsey mm -hmm. um who uh, is a like money coach right uh, like yeah. uh, uh, helps you it helps you to manage your finances uh, before mm -hmm. then I, I was really bad at managing my finances okay. and so in the time that i was flavor alhamdulillah i started managing my finances and so i managed to save an emergency fund wow. because his whole thing is save an emergency fund because you don't know yeah. when you'll need it you don't wow. know when you'll be out of a job you don't know anything <laughs> And so I, so you, so you were on I, Dave Ramsey from back then, yeah. I was on Dave Ramsey back then. Mm, nice, yeah. And so what happens now is we do our event, and I'm like, wow, we can really make something of this. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought to myself, if I get a deal for another event by September, mm. 
we can actually do two events a year and stay afloat, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. As a company. Mm -hmm. So I, and I had two months worth of income. Actually, mm -hmm. no, I had one month worth of income plus uh, maybe like one and a half months worth of income. Uh, um, what had happened is, uh, but do you know what? I feel so bad at telling these stories because I'm, as I'm telling you, I'm remembering them. So I'm like fixing up the mistakes. <laughs> so, okay. So I had two months worth of income, right? Mm -hmm. I left in April. I was like, I've got to do this. But I had two months in savings. So I had June and July. So June and July, I... I managed to um, pay for myself to be at Freshly Grind. I managed to get myself. Then August comes mm. and I had two months to get a deal. Otherwise, if I don't get a deal for our next event, then I don't know what I'm going to do in August. Yeah. In August, alhamdulillah, we get a deal for September yeah. event, right? Uh -huh. But the money's not going to come until the end of August. Uh -huh. And, um, well, and then we had, time. yeah, and then we had six mm. weeks, bro, to sell uh, tickets for that event. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that, man, that, was, that was when you realized the potential, basically. So, yeah. So you went from, working in retail to working for your brother to freshly grounded full time. But you still work with your brother a bit? No. No. We work in the same office, but um, I'm full time freshly mm. grounded. So. so how much notice did you have to give him? <laughs> yeah, I, I, said, I, had a, I sent him, I had a really honest conversation with him and I said to him, like, I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that he gave me and for um, always being there for me. And, you know, I didn't have to go through an interview process or anything like that, obviously. And I'm grateful for that. Um, and I said that I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to try and make this thing work. And I'm all, I've always had this dream and I really appreciate that you were there for me. Mm. And he really appreciated the honest conversation and said he would support me no matter what. Alhamdulillah. That's amazing, man. Working in a small business and then especially with family, it can be really good, man, because when you're working in a small business, you have to touch everything, don't you? And mm -hmm. so you get experience with like every single um, area. So that, that's actually a really good pointer, I think, for anyone. If they can work in, uh, like sometimes if you work in retail, I know time-wise you have to put the time in, but your mind is free to think of other things. So it kind mm -hmm. of maybe allows you to work on those you know, on the, the side thing, you know, and then if you're working as well in a small business where you're touching many different areas, again, a, a couple years in that environment is sometimes like, you know, four or five years in a more kind of corporate environment where you're only allowed to like, you're being babysit, uh, you know, to do your tasks, you know, so uh, that, that's a good pointer. Um, bro, tell me about these deals. Yeah, because I think you know, maybe people don't, because I wanted to actually talk to you about like Muslim media. Okay. And like I said, I, I, I see Freshly Grounded as media, you're putting out content and stuff. Like how can uh, Muslims, it, because media is very much needed. Okay. It's very, like we've, we've done episodes on media, how important it is, how essential it is. Yeah. So how does the monetization of a Freshly Grounded work? How are you able to make it happen? You know? So there's, 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 there's two there's, there's two ways that you can monetize Freshly Grounded, right? Mm -hmm. And what, the main one is obviously through your audience uh, and through your, your episodes. So um, that's the obvious stuff like uh, advertisements on your, on your podcast and basically selling your data to, to advertisers um, or product placement and stuff like that. And we've never been averse to that. But Alhamdulillah, Qadr we've never really been given a great opportunity. And in the Muslim scene, it's hard, bro, because in the Muslim scene... Um, if you're catering to a very niche Muslim audience, bro, there's this issue where the mainstream can be quite afraid of uh, putting their product on your mm. on your platform. Yeah. And then, uh, but also the Muslim scene um, is full of a lot of companies that don't have the kind of money that the mainstream have. Mm. Um, and when you say the kind of money that mainstream have, if you look at an example, like it's it's it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like um, I think. A few years ago, Netflix, and this was years ago when they they didn't even have this much. They paid um, Chris uh, Rock twenty million for his special. They paid Kevin Hart upwards of that. They pay uh, Beyonce signed a hundred million or fifty million dollar deal with Netflix. So mm -hmm. that's when we're talking mainstream money, bro. Mm -hmm. I for Fresh Ground, Fresh Ground has to sign one mainstream deal, mm -hmm. and we might be good for the year or for a few years, yeah. right? Joe uh, Rogan that's as quite, well, bro. That recent, right? Yeah, he just did the recent hundred million deal with Spotify. Mm -hmm. So these numbers are, are big numbers. So when you're talking to like a, a, a Muslim company who is dealing with a niche, a lot of the times, which by its nature, um, a lot of them, even if they like, even if they have a marketing budget of ten thousand pounds a month, ten thousand pounds a month is not a lot of money in 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 business terms. If you're looking for longevity, because how many salaries can you pay in ten thousand pound, bro? Mm. If you're giving people an average salary of not even average salary, but like quite a 
quite a like low salary or 24k like if you think about it in terms of a graduate right like mm. graduates start at like 30k 35 40 45 yeah and then you're giving someone a 24k salary mm. that's five people you can have a five-man team mm. whereas if you want to really get big and, and that's a five-man team and then you have no and then you can't also have any cost you can't pay rent in a building you can't pay for computers you can't pay for anything else because that's your whole income going then you have to pay tax on top of that you pay income tax corporate tax so now if you look at ten thousand pounds a month it leaves you zero profit mm -hmm. and actually you're in debt because you still got to pay rent you still got to pay taxes mm -hmm. you realize that even ten thousand pounds a month is 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 a struggle right so yes. um my point is that that avenue is quite difficult for us mm -hmm. So, you know, bro, these deals, yeah? So it's basically a sponsorship yeah. deal. Um, is that for the podcast or is it for the event mostly? Or Well, so, this, so that's what I'm talking about. So there's, there's two ways, right? So one of them is, is the podcast and, and then the other one is the event. Now, mm -hmm. why events can be a bit more lucrative is because you've got a, a multitude of ways where you can, you can make money. So you can make money from um, ticket sales. You can make money from sponsorship deals, uh, product placement, people being on camera, uh, bit, having their product on your, on your, on your, in front of the eyes of your audience and on, on, your, on, on camera. And the reason that's a bit easier to sell is because you're giving someone a, a, a real product you're saying this is an actual event that's actually going to take place it's actually going to be a thousand people in front of seats and it's very easy for people to understand and, and see and so it's yeah. easier to sell right mm -hmm. and um um and and so they're the kind of mm. the two things that you have mm. the other thing is is we are quite passionate about providing a service to our customer i.e our podcast consumer <laughs> where as much as possible it could be like uninterrupted and unlike yeah it could be like a good quality product that we can give them. And the more adverts we put on it, the worse the quality of the product, right? And so um, we, we, we're quite inspired by Jeff Bezos' mentality of Amazon where he basically said, um, if uh, he basically said, I want to be obsessed with the customer, right? And the customer will never, and I want to focus on assurities. For example, the customer is never going to say, I love Amazon, but... Um, the delivery comes too quickly. I love Amazon, but the customer service is too good. So I'm going to focus on getting quick delivery. That's why he done next day delivery, now same day delivery, now six, by 6 p.m. delivery, now 30 minute delivery by drone because he's just obsessed with that. And so I took on that mentality and said, if you want to be obsessed with our customer or our consumer, then we want to, and we want to give them as much content for free without adverts. But then we're losing out so much potential revenue income there so then how can we make up for that so yeah. having stuff like patreon means so much to us if somebody's really passionate about freshly grounded it really makes a massive difference when they just pay mm -hmm. five pounds a month mm -hmm. to get a bit of extra content or we do these live events and people buy tickets and stuff like that so that's why it makes a massive difference to us mm -hmm. um but with that being said um talking about the monetization of freshly grounded if i'm completely transparent since covid's hit us bro it's been it's getting really really difficult because um because we chose not to or not chosen to alhamdulillah with the qadr of allah we don't uh, fight, we don't really um monetize our actual episodes that much so we rely on these big events that we do in the year mm -hmm. and so our tour which is gonna be our biggest event yet got cancelled last minute because of covid and then we in order for us to maintain ourselves we would also have had to have done a, a, an event in september mm -hmm. so now we've missed the may event and the september event and we don't know when we could do our next event mm -hmm. um so yeah man, it's, um, yeah Bro, you know this, this first deal that you know you got, you said you got in August. You said you're an open yeah. book, right? So can you give us an idea of the size of that? Did <laughs> um, uh, I say I was an open book? Nah. <laughs> no, no, you gotta close a little. Just I went, no, um, I went, I went direct. The, no, but no, I, no, I want to understand. I want to understand. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously sense. you can share that if you want, but I want to understand: Are these organisations? Are they willing to pay five figures or is it like four figures or, you know, this kind of ranges? Um, okay, so so I think you can get an idea by the size of Freshly Grounded. Freshly Grounded is a very small company and our dreams are very big. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've got like less than, we've just got a couple people on, a, on, a, on the payroll mm -hmm. and, um, and we've got, a bunch of costs. We've got our own studio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And so um, the deal we would have signed in August would have kept us going for about six months. And so that shows that it's, it, it, it was, it, it was nice and lucrative in the sense that it would, it would keep us going, but it would also require to do another event six months later. So these yeah. aren't like, there, it's not, that it was never the long-term plan to carry on doing events. Yeah. We have to be able to monetize in different ways mm. um, while also keeping the product like sincere. Do you know what I mean? Like the idea yeah. of Freshly Grounded was, came from a very sincere 
hopefully mm. from a sincere like angle mm. so um you don't want it to yeah, be shaped by questions. by the the business side too much isn't it right yeah yeah um so yeah definitely definitely something good but bro i know what it's like in business man like 100k a year is is nothing really it's not that much money if, yeah if you break down 100k bro and 20 percent, like if 20 percent that's going corporation tax bro now you've got 80 do you know what i mean mm. and if you're paying if you're paying uh that 20 percent that's going on that so now you've got what 60 i mean my maths are really bad so i might be giving this wrong but you've already cut your income in half um <laughs> By taking in hundred yeah. grand, he needs now, to come 60, out UAE, bro. <laughs> bro, and then when, but and then when you're talking about sixty k, mm. and if your average rent for the studio mm. is two grand a month, twenty four grand is gone now on yeah. just the cost of one thing, no equipment, nothing. Yeah. So now you come down to what tw- 30, 35 grand, yeah, 30 bro. Thirty five. Yeah. 35 grand now split that between three people's salary bro who's gonna be able to survive in the uk on a yeah. twelve thousand pound a year salary providing for a family it's not going to yeah. be possible so yes. you're right a hundred thousand really broken down is you'd struggle yeah. as a company yeah, yeah definitely man so what about like you know I, I i look at these other i think about this a lot bro because um i was actually reading an article yesterday and it was about propaganda now they were focusing on the russian interference in the u.s elections and they were saying how the these are uh, the russian agency they would uh, pretend to be certain american journalists and write articles that would either uh, create basically disinformation or persuade people not to vote or persuade people that oh no you got to vote on the for example the third of november even though the elections on the first right so all those people that read that would have not been able to vote right and they were targeting specific people so that was like mm. the first level the second level was is that they wouldn't even use the fe- the personas of these jur- real journalists anymore they started using fake made up journalists and they even created pictures of these journalists through um, ai like combining many faces into a, a fake made up image right and then again they're creating this fake information but they said the new frontier is ai generated people like journalists and AI generated articles to the level where you could create thousands of fake mis, you know, disinformation, uh, articles, tweets, whatever in a day, right? 5,000, 10,000, right? Cause the AI is just churning it out. And imagine like Google's going to pick up this is going to crawl the articles and say, okay, it's relevant to that search result. Imagine the chaos you can create. So it just really reignited me thinking about, uh, media, putting information out there. And obviously as Muslims, we're trying to uh, call the non-Muslims to the best way of life. And we're trying to call our own uh, Muslims, uh, you know, closer and closer to the ideal way of life. So media is so important in terms of what it's doing to people's minds, right? In terms of the last, uh, last week, I think it was, you had uh, the guys from my Tezkia on, right? Freshly grounded. Yeah. So um, like they're talking about the, the effects of pornography. Um, then you've got uh, even just films and, and series that people are watching, they're actually uh, implicitly, implicitly teaching people certain ideas and certain ways of life and certain um, really values, you know, values. So it's, it's imperative that us Muslims get good at this game, right? And then I think of, in terms of the English speaking world, who do we have out there? Like the people that come to mind in terms of like, they're very out there, they're doing a good job, is like One Path Network, and I and love food. one path, man. Yeah. Now, how does one path do it though? I, I haven't seen many ads on their thing or any ads. They're purely donation based. Um, mm, and right. then end feed, I think they have done ads. They do some kind of, uh, deals and stuff, but again, um, they do, I've seen them raising money as well. So what do you think about like the donation model for, you know, being able to, you know, like pay these bills and, you know, get the media out there? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I have nothing bad to say about it first of all mm. but i think that um i think that as we know in our generation in our time in our time of technology the real king of monetization is data the more data you have the more data you can provide the more money you can make mm. and so that's why people like facebook make so much money because facebook they have um let's say i don't know how many users how many users do facebook have like a billion uh, over two billion I think. Yeah. okay so they have two billion users right and so the reason advertisers want to advertise on facebook is because there's two billion people that they have potential they can potentially reach but yeah. but 
if Facebook went to a uh, company and said, do you want to um, send, uh, give us an advert? Do you want to put an advert on our platform? And we have 2 billion users. That's no longer good enough because we're in a, we're in a world of like the most minute data. Data is so key, but, like companies need so much of it, right? And so the reason Facebook can make so much money is because they can say, we've got 2 billion users and input what you want, input the interests of uh, the people you're trying to target in our platform. And we'll tell you exactly how many users of that interest you can access with this much money. That's so much data for the company. The company says, if I put in a thousand pound, I can get between 10 and 20,000 people who are interested in boxing and interested in Islam and to sell my skipping ropes. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what data is king. So we as Muslims have to be on that wavelength and we have to understand that if data is king, how can we start collecting data? And it's not about like, um, uh, it's not about misinforming your consumer or or, or or taking something from them, but it's just about being able to understand how to track your data. So um, understanding how you can really read into the YouTube analytics. That doesn't take anything from my, from my viewer. My, the, the person who consumes Freshly Grounded doesn't have to give me anything. They don't have to give me any information. They don't have to sign up to anything. They don't even have to put their email address in. But if I can just... If I can just interpret my YouTube analytics, which they're watching it anyway, if, they can, if I can interpret my YouTube analytics better, then I can present that data to a company and say, look, I have this amount of users. This is what they're interested in. This is what age they are. And then that gives you, uh, and then there's, there's a multitude way of ways to monetize that. You can either take that yeah. to advertisers. You can take that to, um, you can create a product yourself um, that caters to your audience. So I think that it, your question in like how to monetize, um, the key is data. Mm -hmm. So how, so you're saying data to make the, to make your advertising product more, you know, appealing to companies basically. Well, there's, yeah, there's many ways of, of doing it, but ultimately the more data you collect, like you're never mm. going to, uh, yeah. you're never going to like be like, Oh man, I have too much data. I know my audience too well. It's just mm. the more you know your audience and you understand mm. what they do and how they are, mm. the more you can cater towards them with your own products, with um, making yeah, deals with advertisers yeah. and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. When yeah. it when it when it comes to um, your latest product, is that something that the data sort of inspired you to create, or is that just a? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a, it's a tough one because even though I give all of this, I say all of this, it's, it's seldom something that we do with Freshly Grounded. And it, it's not though, bro, because um, we so just fun. love the yeah. idea. We love the idea of conversation cards. Yeah. And we thought there's nothing for it that, could, that works with the Muslim community. And uh, we do have a problem with the Muslim community in um, uh, sometimes breaking boundaries and having conversations with the, uh, the older generation and stuff. And bro, genuinely, like, if you could be a spy in the wall in our conversations, and I hate to say this because it sounds like I'm trying to big us up, but we genuinely have conversations when we say, like, let's, when we launch this product, we have to do it for the sake of Allah, otherwise it's not going to work. It has mm. to be that... People, we could potentially get people closer to Allah with the questions that they have. When was the last time you had an honest conversation with Allah? Ahi, you might go, oh, do you know what? I can't remember. I need to do that more often. So the forefront, it's weird because I say these things about business, but we, like I said, we don't, we don't really use them in Freshly Grounded because yeah. um, uh, we, I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we, we, don't, we don't want to sell out. Our, our thing has always been, we don't want to sell out to our audience and stuff. So it's, that's a hard, that's a hard um that's a hard balance to get when you're also trying to survive though. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, bro, like uh, you, you do have a feel of your audience, especially if you do live events, you, I guess you get, you know, even better feel of, of what they're about and you know, what kind of life they live. And when you know your audience and even from a, just a, you know, qualitative point of view, that's where the ideas like the cards come from, I think. And you're able to understand a problem and you just told me straight, isn't it? You said, uh, there's a problem in the Muslim community that uh, we don't open up, up enough, etc. So you're actually solving a problem with a product. And uh, yeah, so there's nothing overly commercialized about that. You're solving a problem and you're kind of getting paid for it. And that's what business is, really. Um, it, it doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that. And you're doing a service. You're getting paid, but you're doing a service to the Ummah, isn't it? So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And in, and actually my, my thinking is if you can solve a problem for people 
and it just happens you you kind of need to get paid in order to solve that problem it's now your duty to go out there and sell that solution you have to go out there and sell it and sell it in the best way and sell it to the most people possible that will benefit from it no yeah i appreciate it man we're really proud of this product because it's um it's something that helped us man we were able to have open conversations with our own family members and we we tried it out a lot and we spent we spent a long time on it bro like it wasn't something we rushed we was there we got um footage that of like um, kareem and i sitting in this studio arguing bro over a question like mm -hmm. no that that question would not like that i'm about and there was there was um so many questions we had to take out because we were worried that it would people would expose um themselves which is mm. a uh, problem islamically mm. so for example um we had a question that was like uh, uh how could you get closer to allah right for example or 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 the question was like um what could you do to improve your relationship with allah something like that right and we were like and we were f fearful that that question in 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 the, in the hands of the wrong people uh, might ignite an answer that exposes their sin. They could say, oh, like, I don't pray, maybe I could pray more. Mm. But we don't want that because that's on us, bro. Because it's not, you're not allowed to expose your sins. And so if we're creating something that, that, that gives people a permission to expose their sins, that's going to be on us on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. And so we have to change that question to, mm -hmm. to um, uh, you know, just the wording, like what steps could you take to come closer to Allah? And just the wording can, instead of going, um, what have you done wrong? Just saying, what could you do better? Yeah. It goes, then you don't go, oh, I, I don't pray. You just yeah. say, oh, I could, I could, I could enhance my prayers or the khushu in my prayers, yeah. these kind of things. So, yeah yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you share any others that you had to take out or that just didn't make yeah, the man. final list? Uh, yeah, there was loads. So, um, there was stuff like, uh, There, I think there was stuff like maybe there was I can't remember maybe there were questions about like your um, like your childhood like um, but we were uh, uh, but some of them we had to take out because we were worried that it would it would it would kind of like allow people to like complain about their parents maybe like the way that it was questioned mm -hmm. and we don't want you to talk bad about parents there was uh, there's one question that we have that's like um Okay, there was a question that we have, like, think of somebody you, this one actually made their final cut, but it says, think of somebody you recently had an argument with, um, name three amazing qualities about them without telling me who they are. And that question took so long for us to construct because mm -hmm. there's so many elements of it, right? We wanted to, we wanted you to talk good about someone that you recently had an argument with. So the chances are right now, they're not in your good books. You don't quite like them right now. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that when you say good things about them, you actually feel like oh do you know what that person is a great person let me call yeah. them and let me make up with them let me rebuild that mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. the other uh, thing about that though was that i don't want you to expose to me who you had an argument with because i don't want this to start being a gossiping session or you to backbite about somebody mm -hmm. so the, the 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 prerequisite of that card was don't tell me who they are so mm -hmm. now if you're telling me if i if i ask you that um uh, i mean tell me someone uh, tell me three good qualities about someone that you recently had an argument uh with um without telling me who they are Mm. genuinely oh okay um well half argument okay three qu good qualities okay um i would say uh this person he works very hard okay uh what else he's very has uh husna done to a next level he's always finding excuses for people and he's actually obsessed with helping people he really really uh always looks for how to give that's value amazing. to people yeah that's amazing now, now, see if I if 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 the question was like, uh, name someone you recently had an argument with and tell me three things great things about them. Mm. You'd go, okay, the person is this, mm. and these are three good things. And I'd go, oh, what did what did he do to you? And you're like, oh man, he did this thing, and you and I'm like, oh, bro, like he <laughs> yeah, shouldn't yeah. really be doing that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's also we also like think of like yesterday. Let me ask you guys this question. I'll, I'll ask you this, Mohammed. Uh, this uh, this is a question that Kareem asked me yesterday. Cream is, for, by the way, a very um, inquisitive person, right? Yeah. Which makes, for him to lead this product and lead this project, it was, a, it was a, such a blessing from Allah because, he, you know the, the cards? 
these are the type of questions that Kareem genuinely asks, bro. Like, I'll be in the office and Kareem will be like, how was yesterday? Like, I'll, I'll, like or he'll remember, like, you said that you had to go do something yesterday. And like, oh, bro, how was that thing that you had to do last night? Mm. And then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it was nice. And he'd be like, oh, man, then how did that make you feel? And you feel like, no one asks those kind of questions, but Kareem does. Yeah. And so yesterday he did that. He asked a question. I was like, bro, that is such a good card. But he just asked it as a genuine, he asked it genuinely. We were talking, we were having this discussion about, you know, when you meet someone who, or you know, or, or you're meeting with someone who you're not like so close with, where you can just 100% be yourself. You have to perform a bit, and by that I mean, someone comes to your house and you're like, "I said, I'm like a bro, like, would you like a coffee? Would you like tea? Would you like a drink? Sit down." And it's still you, but you—that's a performance a bit, isn't it? You're performing yeah. a bit like as a. Nice. But whereas, if for example, your boy comes to your house, you're just like, All right, bro, "Come in, bro. Shut the door behind you." I mean, obviously, you still have to be a good host, but it's there's a lot less of the performance, yeah. right? And we were speaking about this aspect. And I said to Kareem that I struggle with longevity in relationships like that. Like I struggle to uh, maintain a good relationship because the more someone's around me, they might see my negative traits, like my uh, impatience or that I can get angry quickly and they would start to dislike me. And so I like just like having relationships that are at arm's length, that are like mm. people get to see me and then they, because I can maintain a good relationship with people short term for some reason, right? I suppose that's like the advantage of being an extrovert. And then Kareem asked me a question that was amazing, bro. He goes, and I asked this to you now, Mohammed. He said, are you the type... No, hold on. Let me write it right. Oh, I'm so nervous, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. Do you feel like you're... Do you... Oh, would you... Would you like yourself? Would you get along with yourself if you, if you met you? Being you, if you met you, would you get along with yourself? 100%. You would, yeah? 100%. Honestly. Why? Top line. Because, because I'm so comfortable with who I am at this time in my life that I feel like I can, I would resonate that, that, comfort, that comfort with somebody else who is into you and exactly the same as me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm. So I've gone through many phases of trying to be you know, trying to fit into a particular group or trying to be somebody that I w maybe wasn't internally or hiding personal things that I was interested in or, you know, like to do, et cetera, just for the, you know, just to appeal to others around me. Right. And I'm in the most socially isolated time I've ever been in, in my life in terms of social circle. Right. So all of the people I associate with are in London or in different cities completely. I don't associate with anybody in the city that I live in. Right. Which allows me to fully be myself when I'm here. I don't have to keep up appearances with anybody. You know, I'm very connected to my family. My family is my priority. Those are the only people I see outside of my work. Right. So when I go to, when I decide to be social, I consciously, I can choose who I have to, who I'm going to go and be social with. Do you understand what I mean? It's not like I'm going to accidentally bump into someone or someone's going to call me and say, oh, do you want to meet up or whatever? That's never going to happen here. I have to actively travel quite far and decide I'm going to be social today and I can pick who I'm going to be with. Mm -hmm. And those people that I pick I'm going to be with are going to be someone I'm going to be comfortable with because I know that I've only got a short amount of time. Do you understand? Like Faisal, you, you know, if I come to see you, for example, I've made a conscious decision to travel very far to come and see you because I know I'm going to enjoy my time with you and I'm going to be comfortable no, but, with you. No, but, you know but, I mean? but, but, but you being you, yeah. if you had to chill with yourself, Yes. Right, this is an exact clone of Muhammad, right? Yeah. What would you say about him? After you chilled with him, what would you say about him? Uh, would you be like, oh, yeah, I really get along with him? Yeah, but, well, I feel like I would. <laughs> no, that's I good. I feel like I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah. I, I wouldn't, uh, only because, only because if I, so this is the thing, if I was pretending about who I was, do you understand? If I walked around pretending to be someone I'm not, then internally I would, my internal self would despise my external. Do you understand? And I wouldn't be able to sit in that room because whoever that person is that I'm sitting with would be pretending to be something. Do you understand well, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the thing. So if mm -hmm. I was to sit with the old version of myself, internally, I'd be really like annoyed. Why is this guy pretending to talk like this or be like this mm -hmm. or, or be interested in these kind of things or hide this element of himself, right? Mm -hmm. However, now that I feel like I'm in a position where I'm the truest I ever have been myself, then my internal is going to resonate with you know, that clone. Because mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's a legit 
authenticity there about mm. who I am, right? Mm. So of course I'm going to be into whatever I'm naturally into. And if that's resonated with someone else, sweet, you know? And, you know, I, I say that similar to you. Like I remember, bro, when we first met, it was very, it was just very random. Like, and the fact, like the first time we met, you just invited me into your house, bro. Do you understand what I mean? And I don't know if anybody knows that, but that's like very intimate first meeting in a sense like it wasn't like oh we went out for coffee or whatever it was it was very you know random like off the cuff i messaged you you're like oh i'm free actually come over to my house and immediately i was like oh that's really sort of forward of you to be fair because it's it's not you know it's not something you you'd naturally do to someone but when we when we got when we met each other bro i realized we've got so much in common we've been through very similar circumstances. We even spoke about it on the first Freshly Ground episode we did together, you know? So that straight away, I was like, I'm really comfortable with this guy. I, you know, I, I can speak to him probably about anything, even though I've only just met him. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. So that's, that's the resonance, bro. It's about being authentic to yourself. And that's my perspective. But if the question was thrown back at you, would you be comfortable with yourself? Yeah, so obviously Cream asked me that question yesterday and I said, I said, give me a second to think about it. And, and then I said, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really? like myself. And the reason I said I wouldn't like myself is because I started thinking about if I was chilling with me, right? Mm. Um, what would I say? What would I say about me? And, and I would say that I can't, I, I don't like being around Faisal because I can't feel relaxed around him. He's too like... Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't go to chill with Faisal if I wanted to just go and relax. Mm. That's what I would say about him. And I'd maybe say he talks a lot. Mm. Um, and don't, but, but, but more so the relaxed thing. I said the number one thing is, like, I would, I would maybe say he's quite, he's, quite, he's quite concerned a lot with, like, what he... Like, the projects that he's working on so much so that he almost becomes tunnel visioned mm. and that's not nice for me because I want to talk to him about me as well but mm. he's so like he's so tunnel visioned that he almost wants no distractions just like go at it and I want to I want I just want to chill with him right but like he doesn't even allow me to chill with him that's what I would say about him bro mm. and so I started thinking wow so the, the reason this conversation came up yesterday is because yesterday I had a a, a dinner that I was going to with a brother and um and then after this, Kareem asked me that, I said, wow, I'm going to try and work on those, those traits. I want, to, I want to try and be someone who feels relaxed around, who, who, who other people feel relaxed around me. Mm. But I think that's going to be a long-term challenge. What about you, Amin? Do you, do, you, do you think that if you met yourself, you would get along with yourself? Would you like yourself? I think 50-50, man, because uh, one thing I think I would appreciate about myself is kind of being direct and holding myself to higher standards. I, I, would, I, would like, I, I would like that as a friend, somebody to do that with me. But then I think uh, maybe I would be, uh, the annoying bit would be maybe my stubbornness or maybe my uh, pettiness sometimes. Uh, so half, half, man. But I find it interesting. The question's that really good, man. Makes you think. I find it interesting that us three are different levels. So like, I am not in an arena where I have to run around and, and think about my livelihood. Once I'm off work, I'm off work, right? So that gives me the ability to be myself and not have to focus on anything else. Mm. Faisal, you're embedded in your project, right? But you're also embedded in your social circle. Like your friends are around you. Do you understand? So you're always going to feel this guilt that you can't give them enough time, which is what I'm getting from you. Like you're, you want to be like people want to be around you, but you can't give them the time that you need because you're very, you know, caught up on what you're doing i mean you're half of it so you are embedded in what you do business wise but you're also distant from friends so similarly to what i said mm -hmm. in the sense that you can choose to go and make an active decision mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. so you haven't got this guilt that you're like oh i have to i'm, I'm not seeing people people expect mm -hmm. that of you because you're far away anyway mm -hmm. so you can make that conscious decision to mm -hmm. go and visit people so you are in the prime like you are the halfway point i'd, I'd argue between me and Faisal in that sense you know because mm -hmm. you've got something you're focusing on all the time like your business is going to be 24 7 on your mind mm -hmm. because it's always something that's going to grow you're not relying on anyone else to pay the bills you have to pay the bills you understand what i mean but um yeah and i also think that the great thing about that kind of question is that there's no wrong answer and so yeah. like uh, Mohammed saying what you said like us three gave three literal different answers yeah. and all of them are right because that's what's subjective to us and um and like yourself Mohammed, kareem gave the same answer kareem said that he would say about himself that okay this guy's quite laid back mm. and 
you know, I can, I can, I'd, I'd get along with him. So um, there's no wrong answer, mm. which is nice because it's not, it's about yeah. self development. It's not about yeah. having a right answer. And that's what mm. hopefully these conversation cards were about. They were just about yeah. getting to know the other person, but also getting to know yourself. Mm. Mm. The, the quality of the questions you ask will determine the, not just the answers, but like the thoughts and the inspiration that you get out of it. You know, like I remember Tim Ferriss was saying, cause he wrote three books and, like each book took him like two years, three years to write. And he said it was really horrible thing. Like, even though he's an author, he's like, I hate writing books. So for his fourth book, he said, I asked myself a question which changed everything. He said, if writing a book was going to be easy, what would it look like? Right? So that's like a question which changes how you even think, right? The answer that you give to that question is going to be completely different if you thought, okay, time for the next book. Right. So then his next book was uh, just a ton, basically ton of interviews of all these famous people. And he just put it all together. And he did that in like six months compared to the two years he used to take on a book. So definitely, man, the, the questions you ask yourself or others is a big, big deal, man. Even if, you know, when I'm answering your question, Faisal, I might, I might just say, yeah, this and this and this. But inside, I'm actually reflecting on it, aren't I? Uh, yeah, of so course. That, that's that's the, the impact you get. Um, so, so Faisal, you know, going, going back to these cards and stuff, like, you know, we talked about the ads, we talked about data, we talked about um, donations. Like, what do you feel is the path to making Freshly Grounded, like, even bigger and bigger, inshallah, bigger impact, you know? It's tough, bro, because I, I, I on, on a few occasions, I have been quite public about what our goal is in Freshly Grounded, and it's a two-party goal, right? It's mm -hmm. in, There's an internal goal and an external goal. So externally, we're driven by this ayah of the Qur'an, which it says that, Allah won't change the condition of a people until they change the condition until they change the condition of themselves. Mm. And so, um, and so what we mean by that is we see, bro the people our brothers and sisters suffering in china we see our brothers and sisters suffering in palestine we see our brothers and sisters suffering in india and people sometimes ask us why don't you directly talk about those things right mm -hmm. and what drives us is that ayah that ayah drives us because we understand who our audience is and we don't want to um we don't want to not scare our audience away but we don't want to we want to remember what our product is. Our product is escapism for that person who's going on their way to work and they're just enjoying, they're the third part of that conversation, mm. right? But the point of that conversation is also that we try and stick to our morals completely. So yeah. an example could be that even when we joke, we don't lie. We know that hadith where the person, the Sahabi said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but oh, oh Prophet, you joke. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah, but I don't, I don't lie in my jokes. Mm. And so the point is, is that, how normal is it for us to lie in our jokes, bro? Like, mm, even if I was to tell you, for example, even if I was to tell you my favorite joke, like, you know, like a joke, right? But the joke itself is a lie. Mm. So how do we do, how do we joke without lying? There's many ways. There's ways, there's prophetic ways. There's ways we can see from the times of the Sahaba, right? And so even if a person, right, listened to Freshly Grounded for two years, and in that two years, they thought, oh, you know what? I've never heard them swear, or I've never heard them lie even when joking. And they stop lying, bro, we know that them stopping lying, i.e. improving themselves, genuinely improves the situation of someone on the other side of the world. So when a person starts waking up from Fajr in the morning, that impacts someone else on the other side of the world because we have to believe in that ayah. Yes. So externally, we have this mission, right? Mm. To improve ourselves and other people's characters through the micro changes, waking up from Fajr, not lying when joking, no longer swearing, not listening to music, et cetera, mm. et cetera, et cetera. And we believe that that's going to make the person a better person. That's also going to affect people around the world because we're basing that off of a promise that we wholeheartedly believe in. That's the external, right? And that's an ongoing mission for us. However, we also have this internal goal in Freshly Grounded, which we don't often speak about. This internal goal is this. I have a mission to provide as many Muslims as possible a job, right? That is competitive, right? But also that allows them to practice their faith and makes them feel comfortable. Mm. Example, let's say a person is a UX researcher. They research, um, they research how uh, user experience is done, right? So this is the person who on eBay um, 
discovered that it's better that the buy now button is yellow because psychologically that helps people buy it, right? That's a US, UX researcher. He, that person research is how a user experiences your product. Mm -hmm. If, for example, we want to bring on a UX researcher and the UX researcher's base salary is, let's say, 55,000, 60. Mm -hmm. 60K a year, right? Which is true, right? Generally, it's around 60K. Now, that person, and bro, by the way, as we know, 60K a year in somewhere like London, bro, is, is a competitive salary. It's like to raise a family, to be paying the crazy rents that we're paying because we're not trying to go for mortgages and all of this kind of stuff. 60K is not like... It's not the person's not living, driving a brand new Mercedes, like living in the mansion, bro. 60 years salary, the person's able to maintain his family. Mm. So anyway, if that, if that salary is 60K and his brother's a Muslim brother, and so he's being offered 60K by Google, we want to offer him the competitive salary. You want to say, we'll give you 60K because that's what you're worth in society today. That's what Google and Facebook are offering you. Why don't you come to us instead mm -hmm. and work on, a, work on a product that is a Muslim product, work on a product where you can come to work and feel free of fitna, feel free of um, uh, office banter that's haram. Feel free to not feel shy to pray your salah in Jama'ah. Feel free to go to Jummah. Etc. 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 I want to provide that on mass, bro. I want to have UX researchers, UI researchers, like an IT department, editors, filmers, cameramen, producers, um, any job you can think of, bro. That's why I want to expand Freshly Grind is so big because I don't want it to, be to, to I don't want it to be a job that can't fit in Freshly Grounded just so that we can provide Muslims with more jobs. That's my real true goal now. And that for that, bro, we have to be a billion dollar company. So, but and and so. My, that, that's, that's my goal, bro. So, and then another aspect of that is, is sisters, right? So there's no denying that, and I'm just talking about London for now. In London, you really and truly generally need two incomes to run a household, really and truly. But the way we're at, bro, the economy is a struggle, right? But as, 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 as like uh, Zaid, right? Random brother, Zaid, right? He's living in London now. And a, a, a two incomes would help, bro, for sure. Even if, right? Because Islamically, as a man, you're meant to provide. But even if that just helps the woman, his wife, just like uh, she doesn't have to constantly ask him for money if she's going out, for example, with her friends or whatever. So it just helps a bit, right? Of course it helps. So um, let's say Zaid now, he's got his wife. But how does he want his wife to be at work? Well, maybe he feels comfortable in a situation where his wife can pick up the kids and drop the kids to school. She can... Um, uh, work in a female-only environment. Work in a female-only environment. Maybe even work from home with the situation that we're in, right? Not have to really interact with men too much. That's what he wants for her. And that's what she wants for herself. We're not talking about oppression. We're saying that she wants that for herself. She wants to be in an environment where she can go pick up the kids. She can prioritize her family. But at the same time, she can earn a bit of money, bro. Mm -hmm. And competitive money. Yeah. Bro, we're in a situation. I want to be in a situation where we allow that sister to work from home and interact as least as possible um, with men. Because why is that not possible now in day and age where we've got Slack, we've got um, Google Chat, we've got all these things, bro? You don't have to have like a twenty-man conference with video call and this, that, the other. Like you can, you could do it in a way where you respect, bro, the wishes and the Islamic principles of these people. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's haram, by the way, to to have a female work in your workspace. I'm not saying that. Uh, and 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 um, but what I'm saying is. I'm, I'm talking about Zaid here. Let's say that's like he wants to go out to work, but then he's got a family of three kids, bro, and they can't, they're not gonna, they don't wanna fork out a thousand pounds a month to a child. She wants to look after the kids at home, and but we can give task based mm. jobs, bro, because, mm. bro, um, I know first hand experience from the females in my family that, that they, a lot of females have a skill that men don't have, bro. Like, like there's, there's certain traits that I've seen in like the men in my family, but then the females in my family have, but that might just be my family. Like in my family, there's females who are like mathematicians, bro. Do you know what I mean? And I'm bad at maths, but I'm looking at that skill and I'm like, wow, we need like companies need people who are that intelligent, but, and, and it's that the other. So my point is, is I want to be able to provide even that. Um, mm. So that both Zaid feel comfortable, the sister feels comfortable. At the same time, she's got a group of sisters she's working with, but at the same time, she's earning a competitive salary. At the same time, she could be at home. And um, 
and so that's my my true goal right like mm. being able to create this internal space well for me to be able to do that at mass we need to have a lot of money mm. and so if you ask me what my goal is with freshly grinding financially um that's what my goal is if you ask me how we're gonna make it i have no idea i have mm. no idea bro i don't know yeah, yeah, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I'm just taking each day as it comes. Right now, we're like a very, very small team of like a couple, a couple brothers. That's it. That's all we are. Inshallah, bro. May Allah make that a reality and more and more than what you even dream, inshallah. I mean, um, I, I really like that, bro, because it's basically, it's like, imagine, you know, I was looking at actually, what was the company I was looking at yesterday? I was, I, was looking at, I was looking at Cheesecake Factory, okay, the company. They employ 50,000 people. Wow. Okay. Now imagine all these people, imagine the business operates based on Islamic values, right? Now, when we say Islamic values, it's deeper than the, the first thing that comes to mind. It's what you're saying, bro. Like Islam gives uh, precedence uh, to certain social things, okay? So we understand uh, as Muslims on this earth that life's not about just getting more money to follow more desires to then enjoy life and die, right? There's more to it. You have to contribute to the society, et cetera, et cetera. We all know this stuff, right? What that translates into, like you were saying, might be that, well, the, the sisters can work more flexibly because they understand the priority, not just they understand, but their employer understands the importance of spending quality time with your children and having that good relationship with them. Um, and then you might have uh, a, an environment where people are advising each other. People are helping each other to avoid backbiting people. So all of these things, this is the deeper level than just the saying, you know, or oh, we don't get involved in interest, for example, or riba, or whatever, right? It's deeper than that. It's how can we facilitate the Muslim society? Or even, even if you're in the UK, for example, it's like we're going to hire non-Muslims, but we're going to allow them to live an Islamic lifestyle. Bro, exactly. And yeah. you know what else goes into it? I mean, is um, if you look at these big companies, right, like the Fortune 500 and these large companies now that are like these tech startups that are taking over the world. Bro, if you look at how they treat their employees, I want to be on that level. Bro, they, they, they have private dental care covered. Anything happens to your teeth, we pay for it. Mm. Um, uh, uh, gym memberships, health and fitness. So if you do sports clubs, you, do, uh, you go to gym, we pay for your membership because we care about your health and safety. Travel covered come into come into come into work or, or, or not travel covered but um like they they they, they can pay your travel up front so you you know because when you get like a year like you, if you pay for the tube you can either pay for it every day you tap yeah. it or you can pay for a year in advance and start you but they'll pay for the year in advance and you just pay them back on a monthly for example yes. but they provide all these benefits there's um there's a few other uh, things that i really like there's the, some of the top employees in some of these companies have a concierge system where it, your wife's pregnant and you want to send flowers home you just speak to the concierge i want to send flowers and they sort it for you bro mm. there's um there's a um they got in-house counseling if it works too much pressure for you mm. they've got um uh, uh what was i saying the dental thing but there's another one dental health oh uh, catering so um when you come into a work uh there's a cafeteria and it's free bro lunch is provided mm. bro why can't we healthy, do that yeah. It's hell. Mm. I, I would love that, bro, man. Mm. I would love to be like, bro, yeah. uh, when you come work for Fresh Grounded, you've got a gym membership covered. Mm. Whatever gym, just you mm. just um, send us the receipt. Yeah. Uh, dental, if you've got anything, any, bro, I remember when I worked for, for uh, when I worked, um, I got, um, I went to the dentist, right? And um, I had to have some fillings, bro. And I got like the most expensive ones because my work was covering it. Mm. And even though I knew that I was getting the most expensive ones. I didn't feel guilty because I thought that's what they, that's what they want me to do. That They want me to feel good about my, where I work. Yeah. Like, well, man, like my bro, since that day, I've still got the same feeling in. It yeah, hasn't come yeah. out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So um, I want to be able to provide that, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah imagine, cool. imagine like having everybody get a Quran, a Hifz coach and a Tajweed coach. Wow. And instead of like the, uh, you know, the culture of, you know, after work, go out for drinks or whatever in the UK, they have that right. After work, Go for the dars, go for the mm. uh, halakha, go for the, you know? Um, that, yeah, man. That would be amazing, yeah. You feel at home, bro. You feel looked yeah. after. That's the nice thing. Like, even my work, they cover, break down, cover. Like, my car broke down once, and I was just like, oh, I just remembered they cover that. So it was just nice to know. You know, stuff like that is, is it makes mm. you feel like you belong somewhere and that you can rely on someone. It's more than just a, 
of someone you work for. It's like almost mm-hmm. like a family sort of element to it. One hundred percent. I want people to come and work fresh Ugandan and never want to leave. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that, that's beyond. That's more than finance. And, and part of that is finances. They have to have a competitive salary, but we can't provide everybody with a two hundred thousand pound a year salary or whatever. So it's not just the salary, bro. It's the making. It's it's, it's feeling like you belong somewhere, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah, I know some people. They work for charities. You know, in London, I know one specific brother, and bro, because. Like he, he's graduated from uni and everything, but they're paying him like 20K a year. You know, this guy was like 30 something. He has kids and they're paying him like 20K a year. And he knew he could get paid more, but he's like, you know, it's a good cause, you know, let me work for them. But in him working for them, he's actually, you know, sacrificing a lot. And there, mm. obviously there's, there's something good uh, to be said about sacrificing for the sake of Allah, right? Definitely. We need that. But that's for the employee to choose that I want to sacrifice this. It's not for the employer to push them to sacrifice. But it's it's like, it's like, it's like working late, right? Like, um, as an employer, you should never ask. And inshallah, I don't do this. Inshallah, I don't do this, but you should never ask your employees to, to work late. Right. However, if, if if the brother's like I'm I'm here I don't care I'm coming in on a Saturday bro you can't fight it that's just it's lovely that you have a passionate person yeah. you should never be mad at them if they don't do you know what I mean because yeah. me I'm like uh, the type of person who when it hits five o'clock bro I'm out of the office mm-hmm. so I can't expect others to be like no no no, no you stay till another two hours so mm, of course yeah man like, these are all dreams but we don't know how we're gonna do it because we're on a very small level like I said like right now even we're, we're trying to we, we would love to get a full time editor on board we we really need a full time editor but where we're at bro we, we, how hard COVID hit us. And 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 uh, uh, investing in these cards and, and all sorts, but I'm trying to maintain the company as it is. Mm. We can't bring on another editor right now, which mm. is a shame because it's like I've got, we've got these massive dreams, mm. but we we can't even have like a part time three days a week, you know, eleven pound an hour mm. Mm. editor. Just to, mm. do, do you know what I mean, bro? Yeah, so yeah. there's um there's a um. There's a lot of work to put in. I don't know how it's going to happen, but inshallah, like, we make the eye on it. Allah is our razaq And I say that all the time is that actually, the one who provides is Allah. He's, he, he's given uh, the, the, the name Ar-Razaq. Like, wow. You know what I mean, bro? The one who provides, that's amazing. I, 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 love, I, love just, I love even just thinking about that name. And even then, bro, we, um, even in, this takes us back to the cards. In the cards, we mentioned uh, one or two of the cards have Allah's, like, the translation or the loose translation of some of Allah's names. And then we ask people to reflect on them. So one of the names is um, Al-Latif. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And one of the teachers, actually, when he was talking to us about that, I remember I was saying to one of the brothers, I said something like, oh, man, Look at how this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and then because of that, like now we're here. And how, you know, often we think about that kind of stuff, and we say, "Oh man, look at Allah." He's, I said, "Oh man, Allah is Al Hakim, man. He's the All Wise. Like He knew, right?" And one of the teachers who was there, he said, "You know what? I would actually use the name Al Latif for that, like the the subtle. Look how Allah subtly made you do this and subtly put this in your path so that you ended up here. And I was like, wow. And so when we started in the card, I said, we have to put that name in there. Just, and the, the question is up like one of Allah's names, you know, can translate to the subtle name a time in your life where, you know, you, you experience that name. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Man. I so, mean, answer that. Oh, really? Uh, which name? Al Latif? Yeah. Yeah, I need two weeks to think about this. Yeah, it's a big one, Achi. <laughs> Allah Tif, Allah Tif. Um, yeah, Allah is uh, subtly involved in everything, to be honest. You know, um, like now that you're making me think about it, and I'm just reaching for the closest thing I can think of. Um, yani Allah is Latif in that uh, I, I was able to. Uh, come here, do this podcast with you guys. And it was actually made easy for me. And it's it's in a very subtle way that uh, Allah made it easy, right? The fact that, you know, I can record this from home. The fact that, you know, I just need to do a bit of clear up behind me and, and get this set up. And it is like very easy. And I just asked you over WhatsApp if you can record tomorrow night. This is uh, subtle things, you know, I didn't, you know, don't really think twice about them, but they're there. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's not something that we wake up one day and we think, whoa, like Allah gave me that today. No, it's like yeah, you take yeah, for granted, yeah. I suppose. But mm. alhamdulillah, um, yeah, so Faisal, you know, like, I, I know I'm like digging in this topic a lot, but 
you know, like One Path Network, for example, they raise a lot of money, yeah. mashallah, uh, yeah. from donors. And I think this is something that I think we've talked about on Mind House before. You know, an uh, organization like One Path, organizations like Cage, you know, these are long term things. They're things that you're, it's not urgent, okay? Uh, the, ur the urgent thing is, you know, this person is starving. This person is uh, fleeing from a war or a, a drought, okay? This is what Muslims love to give to more. But I think I said a few episodes ago or something that maybe if, if you're going to give 100 pounds, just always try and set aside 10 pounds of that, 10% of whatever you're giving to a long-term thing, like media, like uh, cage, you know, advocacy group. You know, this is what we need, man, because we need to do more, man. Like I was, uh, you know, like for example, Jordan Peterson. Okay, I'm just bringing him up because I, I know I saw his Patreon a year or so ago. The guy, he was getting $60,000 a month on Patreon, okay? And uh, yani, even these people that are giving money, what are they even thinking? Like, uh, are they thinking that they're going to get reward in the Akhirah? You know, very, very unlikely, right? Are they thinking that, like, what even, what is the message that they're so desperate that they want to amplify and help get out there? Whatever it is, you know, it might be a good thing, but whatever it is, yani, the cause of whether it's indirect or direct da'wah needs to be out there more than that, right? So these $60,000, $60, like imagine what Freshly Grounded would do with $60,000. Imagine what uh, One Path would do with $60,000 every single month. Like, Yanni, the money is out there. It's just that, I don't know, man. It's like we don't give it priority. Um, do you think that's changing? Do you think people like realizing the importance of putting money into this? It's a hard one, man. I was having a conversation with Kareem yesterday. I was watching a TED talk about acting like a startup. And I said to Kareem that we are a startup, right? In Freshly Grounded. But we behave like a large corporation sometimes. Like we, um, I, and I mean that in the sense of like, we don't go out and seek funding. And um, the things that startups do that make them successful, right? Like I was talking to him about Netflix and I said that Netflix is in debt. It's a, it's not a cash rich company in any, by any standard yet. It's paying 20 million for specials, 50 million, hundred million because they got a long-term goal. Like you're saying, right? Whereas their long-term goal is obviously um, to sell, obviously uh, eventually, like they're probably yeah. looking for like that uh, $1 trillion business deal or whatever. And that's a very long-term goal. It might be 20 years, 50 years down the line. Mm -hmm. And um, until then, they're just going to keep, getting money off investors they're going to keep getting in debt so that they can build their data because data is worth more than money right now um but i said what i said, but I said why don't we behave like a startup like we need an an editor we need to pay someone bro an editor it could be someone part-time who's a uni student that you could that you could give them uh, like what a competitive salary but competitive at that age might be like 1500 pound a month do you know what i mean mm. And in, like you said, bruv, like for the world, that's a very small amount of money for like the world, right? Um, and the situation that we are in Fresh Uganda now, we, we need to be smart about our money. Um, but why don't we behave like a startup? Why don't we put our money where our mouth is kind of and like, for example, seek funding and, and, and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and it wasn't something that we were saying that we we're going to do, but we were just talking about how... Yeah. Um, you know, these things, these things can work. And, and so I, I, my point is that I understand where you're coming from, bro, but I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer to that question mm. because I just, I just don't know. Like we're in a very confusing way, but I, I, I don't know. I like the Patreon model. I like the Patreon model. The reason, I, but, but the, 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 it's tough, bro, because like to get patrons is so difficult. Yeah. Like if you look at the amount of subscribers that a person has and then how many patrons they have, you could have like a hundred thousand subscribers, but have, 50 patrons maybe 100 patrons but the patreon model is nice because you are providing a service like as much as we can be a bit slow with our patreon service for sure but there is a service that you're getting which is you do get the episodes early you do get the episodes without the intro because people don't like they listen to a five minute intro when you blab in you get it without that you get um an episode early you get extra q and a's where you can ask questions to the team at freshly grounded yeah. um you you do get discounts and early birds to our shows and stuff like that but it's not like you don't get anything maybe that's like, like for example, we're well aware that 90% of our patrons are patrons because they support Freshly Guarded, not because they're like, oh, it's Thursday, I'm going to get the episode a day early. But at the same time, it's reassuring for us because we feel like we are providing a service for that income, yeah. right? Um, so I like the Patreon model a lot. Mm. Um, so I would I say like we should try and move towards that. 
Mm. I, I know uh, Tim Ferriss did an experiment with his podcast last year yeah. where he moved to Patreon model. And it was like, I can't remember if you, that was it. The only thing you got if you, you know, contributed was you get access to his Q and A's, um, which is something actually very valuable. Uh, at least I would view that as valuable. Yeah. But um, he actually, you know, he went back on that and he went back yeah, to the advertiser model. So, you know, what does that say if Mr. Tim Ferriss can't make it work? <laughs> it's difficult. Exactly. Man. But bro, do you know what? I, I don't even mind listening to adverts and stuff on Tim Ferriss's podcast and stuff like that because I know I can skip it. And if that's helping him financially, bro, and I'm yeah. I'm gaining I'm gaining a lot by listening to his service, mm. what well, I'm not too bothered by it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, the, the, you know, Tim Ferriss, at the time that he, this was about a year and a half, two years ago, he his, his form for sponsorships is public. And he charged at that time, probably more now, yeah, $30,000. Yeah. yeah, I think so it was 50 30, 30, now. Yeah, is it so yeah. fifty thousand dollars for a sponsorship slot? Yeah, but you have to buy a minimum of three slots. So as a company, you have to invest a minimum of one hundred fifty thousand dollars for his podcast. Yeah. yeah, and on top of that, he can't select everybody. He only selects products that he likes, right? Yeah. yeah. So if if he's doing bro like three sponsorships in an episode, he's making one hundred fifty grand per episode, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. mad. Yeah, and and uh, actually speaking of the the impact and stuff that you can have. Uh, where does he, obviously he's got a lot more money than what he gets from the pod, podcast, to be honest, but um, yeah. he put a lot of money into psychedelics research. I don't know if you know about oh, this, really? but that's like one of his uh, things he wants to do for his legacy, which is he believes that, uh, you know, like micro doses of LSD and these kind of things, they uh, put you in a state where you can, uh, through taking that stuff and then doing counseling, apparently there's been big breakthroughs in getting over PTSD and these kind of things, depression as well. So he believes in that. He's, I'm not saying that's halal or anything, but I'm saying that he believes in that. I mean, he's able to put money into that because of this kind of thing, you know? So I don't know. Like you said, yeah, I, I don't know either, but it's, uh, I feel like, I guess at least we can act on it ourselves. You know, if we see a, a good, put more priority to media, to be honest, like, yeah. you're getting it now bro you're getting people that you're getting the uh you know ceos and absolute you know powerhouses that are valuing this lifelong i mean let's take elon musk for an example the guy wants to go to mars bro like what what ceo you ever heard before like in the last however many years talking about that in terms of like a long-term goal that really doesn't have much to do with the personal but more the humanity effort like it's mm -hmm. not really necessarily about him he's trying to get humanity in the, like in a space age travel sort of scenario because he's grown up with that and he's passionate about that and that's you know he wants to see that star wars future sort of thing do you know what i mean but, you, but yeah. it, that's the drive isn't it he, he's got that drive and that's where yeah. he's putting his long-term money yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. we have many like yeah. mashaykh and many like du'at and uh, other people who are who are fueled by their love for, for allah and his religion um, I think we, I think people have bigger visions than, you know, Elon Musk, to be honest, and more important mm. visions than that. It, it's often just the resources, man. Yeah. But, but speaking about Mohammed's point, I think he raises a good point is that people like Elon Musk, Elon Musk himself, right? He, he very rarely uses his own money, right? He's got all these people who, who, who want to throw money at him because of his ideas, but he's built up this brand of this man yeah. who's crazy enough to think of the craziest ideas because he's built that brand up, bro. There are people who are just begging to throw money at his projects, bro. They want to fund his project projects. Yeah. And he doesn't even like, and, and he, he, he doesn't even need to take it. Or he doesn't take or for a lot of time. He doesn't take it. And, um, because they believe in the person, bro, yeah. bro, mm -hmm. he's, he, he, they don't care if, if they put, he puts it into Tesla, <laughs> SpaceX, the boring company. Um, uh, what's he doing now? Uh, the Neuralink, Neuralink. Was called Neuralink. Yeah. Uh, they don't, they don't care, bro, because they, they, it's yeah. just a guy who's built this brand of, I'm going to do stuff that's mm -hmm. going to change the world. Yeah, yeah. And they want to throw money. At him. Imagine if mm -hmm. there were people, bro, who are like, you know, I see this project doing well, but I can see that, it needs support, right? However, I, do you know why I don't like that mentality actually as well? Is because why can't we do it ourselves? Do you know what I mean? Well, so that's, that, that's why in, in, in some ways I'm really passionate about Freshly Grounded and, and making it a successful business so that we can do it ourselves. So like, for example, these conversation cards for, uh, for much of the aspect, it's, it, we want to be able to, um, when we release them, like I said, we, we said we can only release them if, if, if we want to impact people for the sake of Allah. However, 
we wouldn't have been pushed in the direction to release a physical product if COVID didn't hit us hard and we missed out on two events. We were like, what can we do? Do you know what I mean, bro? So, um, so that is a business move. Like we were trying to create product so that we can sell product, we can shift units. Um, and if I was just like reliant, just thinking, why isn't anyone like funding this? Why isn't anyone funding this? Why isn't anyone funding this? I would never be pushed to, for example, create products. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a double-sided sword. And also when you do um, build something grassroots from the ground up, the advantage of it is that you have full control. You have full say of what it does. You have full freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to get the best of both worlds. Like it's very rare that yeah. someone's going to go, oh, by the way, here's a hundred grand. I yeah. don't want it back. Just like I want to support the project. How, yeah. It's very rare, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I, I kind of favor the model of basically actually being a business rather than relying on donations. Because when you're solving someone's problem, you can just solve that in a better way or solve it for more people and you'll make more money, you know? And mm. I, I kind of prefer that kind of model. Like even me with something like... Um, mind heist or the kind of projects that I do more for impact. I, my dream is always that my business success funds that, right? So the business solves big problems for people. It brings in money and then I can put that over here. That's kind of what I want to do. Uh, that was, that's my ideal. And so it's, it's about like, okay, what problem, what big problems can I solve? Because if you solve a big problem, you make big money from it, you know? And so I really like that yeah. idea. I really like that idea because I said the same, I said something similar to um, Kareem. Mm. What I said is like, why, do, like we were like, how, like we have this like concept where um, we, we're happy to throw out ideas, right? Like even if they seem crazy. And so I'm always throwing ideas and a lot of times they're getting battered down. But like one thing I said is like exactly what you said, like this model where you create a business that funds the project, right? Yeah. So I said, at Freshly Grounded, there's a lot of skills that we've built up by building Freshly Grounded that, yeah. we, don't, that we don't offer as a service. Yeah. So for example, why don't we, why don't we start a consultancy exactly. firm? Exactly. Right? Like Freshly that. Grounded Consultancy yeah. where we help people brand and set up yeah. their own islamic organizations yeah. but the money and we can charge like we can very um uh, guilt-free charge per case like tens of thousands and then inject that into but, but but then these ideas get back down because there's also elements of that that won't work if we're putting all that energy into helping other people with their projects we're not gonna be able to give up time to freshly grounded so i also have this like thing where I have to keep putting myself back and saying, no, I'm going to give 100% to FG. I'm going to give 100% to FG. Mm. I'm going to give it 100%. And then eventually, inshallah, these things pay off, you know? Inshallah. What I'm going to do, boys, is just quickly message um, the brother who's coming in for Freshly Grounded in yeah. uh, soon, just to mm -hmm. give him Kareem's number yeah. and say, uh, when you get here, contact him as mm. I will be... I'm, I'm not really right now. Sorry. Excellent. Yeah. You know, I was even thinking, Mohammed, like, there are certain strategic moves you can make um, to make money go further, right? So like, I, I know an organization, Faisal probably knows what I'm talking about. Um, I think they raised, they're, they're kind of a brand new organization and they raised like 200,000 pounds to do their project, okay? This is like a dawa kind of project, uh, uh, fully Islamic for the sake of Allah, but obviously they need money to operate. Now with 200,000 pounds, in certain parts of the world, you can actually buy the property that you're going to use at your office and studio, right? You can own that. You could even, for example, I was thinking of this, you could buy two um, kind of apartments. One you can use as an office and a studio, and one could be a waqf that the organization makes as a waqf, and you rent that out, and that is a, an income stream for the organization, right? Uh, now, in London, 100K won't, like, will get you a shed, you know? But in some countries, it will, uh, in some countries, uh, it, it goes very far. So even this is like, it's an area where maybe the people operating these kind of organizations, especially media, because media can be done from a garage and be made to look sick. You know what I mean? So there, there is, I think, a, it is an interesting idea to go to a country where things are cheaper, the money goes further, and you could do more with that money, you know? Have you ever thought of that, Faisal? I mean, maybe you're just, you know, your family in London and stuff, so it doesn't really makes sense or well yeah we've we've considered so many different things man like ideas are always in and out of our heads and but like i think there, there's you I, I try and take like i don't take each day as it comes but like at least focus on each individual um scenario as it comes and and right now we're in this phase of okay covid's just given us a, a massive punch in the face yeah um 
let's maintain what we what we know mm. the weekly episodes let's let's up the level of content now we've got the cards out let's make sure we're doing ihsan with that and um and yeah. he has to we have to take each other as it comes otherwise we're going to yeah. fly and uh, like we're going to try and run before we walk and then we're going to fall yeah. so um 100%. yeah it's a difficult one man makes sense man I wanted to um, ask you, do, do, go on. Do you, do you mind if I quickly run to the bathroom? I could have come but I, uh, I'm, I, I, I think uh, I've been like, me drinking this recording water. for you. Does it, does it need to be paused or can you guys just have a nice little net on and I'll come and join it as you guys? Go as on. You, uh, uh, yeah. Go on, Muhammad will do our thing. I feel like, I feel like Muhammad, um, because of my uh, loud mouth, you haven't spoken much this podcast and you bring so much value, bro. Like I'm always thinking about you. So by the way, thank you wow. for that um, thing. So thank you for that poster that we uh, have in the office. You can't see it right now, but. Oh, his battery's oh, gone. Oh, look at that. My battery's <laughs> gone. It's a good time for me to go to the bathroom yeah, yeah. and give my battery a break. Go on, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, Hamad, yeah. you have to speak for like, until he comes back. <laughs> oh, when he comes back, I'll be quiet. Wait a second. Um, can you, you might have to pause it, bro, because I need to grab something from this the bedroom. <laughs> okay, three, right, two, sorry. one. So, um, face up, um, Muhammad, yeah, definitely. If you want to ask something or say something, then say it. Yeah? Bro, I'm not taking noticed, over, yeah. It's always like this when we have yeah. three people, yeah. I just, I like, to, I don't know if I like to take a back seat, I just listen more, yeah, because yeah. I feel like I'm. Want to, I just feel like I'm a consumer now. I'm listening to the, the conversation yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. I feel well, like I, think, I can be quite overpowering in conversations often as well. Yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't shut up, man. So, yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> uh, one thing I was really interested in, like, it was just one thing that I've seen about Freshly Grounded because at the end of the day, you have oh, to. Oh, stop with the questions. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, you have to compare. Let's, let's be real. There's a lot of podcasts out there, bro. I mean, Mind Heist is a podcast, isn't it? There's a lot of podcasts that came about through the inspiration that you gave them. But like one thing for Freshly Grounders, I've always seen it as like a, this bridge. Like you're always bridging things, right? It's always creating this bridge of like, for example, right now you've got this conversation thing where we're creating bridges between people, right? And I, what I'd like to see from Freshly Grounders in the future, which I think you've got the potential to do, is bridging entire communities, like bridging like non-Muslim figureheads with Muslim influences, etc. For example, mm-hmm. like my biggest thing is like I want... When Joe, when Joe Rogan said he wants to get Trump and Biden in a room and converse, I was like, that is interesting to me. You know, I would watch that. I don't even listen. Mm. I don't even care about both of them. Mm. But the conversation that they may have is what interests me, right? So when someone said, oh, they wanted to have um, Mohammed Hijab and Joe Rogan in a room, mm. you know, I'd be like, that, that's an interesting conversation I'd yes. love to see. Do you get me? So like, I'm thinking now, and it, I would like to see more Muslim you know, for the people that you've had on the podcast before, you know, all the Muslims that you've had on the podcast before, mm. sitting with someone who maybe isn't Muslim, but, but is also well known. Do you understand? Mm. And then just seeing how that conversation plays out. It doesn't have to be exclusively about Dean, you know, yeah. but there's obviously Dean's going to mm. come into it. Naturally, not even right? a debate, just a conversation. No, just a conversation. Yeah. So it's about, yeah. it's about getting people from different worlds and just seeing yeah. how they interact together. Yes. You know, yeah. that's, that's where I envision. You know, and obviously you may have thought about it before. It may be something that doesn't interest you, but it's something that I think you, Freshly Ground as, as a platform, has the potential to to go into. You mm. know, now mm-hmm. the the logistics of that is quite difficult, and finding time where everybody's available is quite difficult, etc. Mm. But you know, that's it's just part of it. You know, booking that in long term and saying, hey, it could be anything, bro. It could do be one like, big one per quarter or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't always have to be like, oh, we're gonna bring you on because we want to give you dower. Like that's not what we're saying. Mm. But it's about, there's people, that, bro, that have been exposed to Muslims, but don't understand Islam in that sense, you know, mm-hmm. there's, and with those people, so let's say you get, I don't know, let's say hypothetically, okay, Russell Brand, I don't know, because he's got, he does media mm. and stuff, right? With him comes his audience. Yeah. You know, if they see he's done a show with somebody, his audience are then put into this, they're exposed to yeah. just our way of thinking, you know, our mm. methodology, our mm. thought process, you know. And Russell Brand and Muhammad Hijab, there you go. Yeah, something like that. Or, you know, uh, let's go big, man, like Jordan Peterson and Hamza Sources or do you understand Allah. these kind of people? Just, just just seeing <laughs> just seeing it and then just phase of sitting in the middle, like, oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. it bro. but like yeah. anyway you know that's that's where i want to see us in the future i want to see us in these arenas bro i want to see us having these conversations mm, the yeah. main thing is instead of just doing reaction videos to the big guys like actually get them in the room <laughs> yeah bro because 
Actually, like Facebook, if you're, you know, I'd consider you the lead, the, what you've built is the leader of Muslim podcasts right now, right? And I don't know the numbers. I'm just doing that based on the influence that I perceive, okay? I don't know the numbers. I don't know the stats. I don't know. However, you, once again, you getting that, those analytics and coming to, you know, approaching somebody of that, you know, fame or whatever, saying this is what, who we are, this is, do you want to come on and have a conversation? That's, you know what I mean? That's sweet. It's like when you had, um, I, but was it Rush Athletics? Was that his name? Was that his name? Like he came with his audience. Do you understand what I mean? Like mm -hmm. his audience would see that he's on this show. So he'd, they'd, they'd be on that. And then you were exposed on, you know, there was some exposure there and it was a back and forth. I don't know how popular he is, but I'm sure he's got a big YouTube following, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that kind of dynamic, bro, I think it's where we can tap into. <laughs> Yeah, man, I appreciate that. I think that's a really, really good idea, man. Um, I really appreciate you saying that as well. And I, I appreciate that um, you would trust Freshly Grounded as a brand to, to deliver that kind of content. Mm. Um, we actually had a conversation about this very recently uh, at the office. And um, I think our intention of how Freshly Grounded, how we want it to be perceived has changed, right? Mm. And, um, and we feel that um like anything when you put out product uh, you you they go you go through like a cleansing process right where you you start understanding your audience more and more and more and more and more yeah. so we used to feel like our oh, fresh grounded is that bridge between like the non-practicing and the practicing muslim where right. like the guys who go to shisha bars and and are like um you know blasting music in their car they also right. listen to Christian Grounded and I think like as time went on and as we became more honest with ourselves and we reviewed our audience we realized that that's not necessarily the case like I don't think that Christian Grounded is necessarily perceived as like cool in like all um, scenarios do you know what I mean and we have to be honest with ourselves and say look maybe we're not bridging all these kind of gaps right and that's like an example of that and so my point is is that we were talking about now coming to your point this idea of like having these kind of discussions that you're talking about and the reason we decided that um, we want to stay where we're at rather than going to those kind of discussions yeah, yeah. is because doing an analysis of our audience, we realized that a lot of our audience are mature. A lot of our audiences are older um, than the average YouTube audience. Our audience are like starting the new Muslim family. They're having children. They're getting married. Um, uh, with some qualitative research, we've been able to find that a lot of our uh, audience work in like high profile jobs, like head offices of um, Apple, head offices of Next, head offices of NASA. And so we realize that we're not speaking to uh, people who don't have it together, right? We're actually speaking to an audience who like, they actually don't care for the YouTube drama. They're not watching YouTube drama. They're not watching debates. They yeah. actually just want to put plug in in their ears on their way to their job and just listen and then they're going back to their families they, they're building families so we actually want to talk about stuff like improving the family um setting we want to talk about um stuff like a pornography addiction because these things bro are things that people deal with but it also but it's not like it's not it's not like oh this person said this and this person did this let's get them both on the podcast because we realize that our audience I don't want to say they're above that, but they don't care for it. Do you know what I mean? There's an audience that do care for it. And then there's an audience that are like, they're so busy with their lives that they, um, they don't have time for it. Yeah, and so yeah. I think in realizing that we want to stick to what's natural for us. And although those kind of videos will get us views, I think we want to stick to what our true essence is. And I feel mm -hmm. like we've, we've, we've hit a gap in the market, which is for the, the, the lay Muslim, whether it's the lay practicing Muslim, maybe, but who just like wants to zone out for a bit and be the third person in the conversation. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and they, they, they don't have time, nor do they want to listen to drama. They don't want us to talk about, oh, did you see this video where this person said this and this video, where this person yeah, said this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's get both of those people on and they could talk it out together. They don't, they don't want to know, bro. They want to just like ch chill back, listen to it on, in their AUX in their car and just be like, oh, wow, that's true. I never considered that about consumer psychology. Do you know what I mean, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I, I think that, that. that's something I always struggle with, man, is that I feel like, even our audience might be similar to, to yours in that way than Faisal. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like they are, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually, in a way, like these are the people I'm comfortable with, right? Like our audience, I'm sure I would enjoy meeting them and talking to them. The but, same here. but I feel like it's a bit of a failure in the sense where like Mind Heist was supposed to give new perspectives. And I think it gives new perspectives to, yes, those practicing people, but the people that need 
maybe to be exposed to, I don't know, a Muslim way of thinking other than non-practicing. And I just, I kind of, I'm annoyed at myself that I can't seem to find a way to reach those people. Like I, it's just not natural for me. You know what I mean? So that I, I, I kind of get annoyed at that. And there's so few people like think of all the organizations, all the du'at, all the this, all the that. How many are actually reaching those non-practicing people? It's like, seems to be very, very few. And it's like, we have to go out of our way to reach that, those people. And we're not going out of our way. Like for me to reach those people, I have to do something uncomfortable. Yeah, it's Mm. difficult because it's so difficult because, okay, so people are on this journey, right? And you are, you might be like, mine heist might be like, let's say the journey starts here, mind highest might be here on that journey, which means they have to go through a level of like um, practicing and, and experiences and then they, then they will pick up a mind highest. Whereas you just want to basically, what you're saying is you want to move yourself a bit closer in that journey, like a bit yes. more towards the beginning, the, cl- yeah. the closest you can to the beginning, yeah. which yeah. is probably the most rewarding as well because you're like shaping how people think. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I get that, bro, but I feel like it's, it's so difficult. Like you say, it's difficult, bro. How do you, that's like an algorithm that's difficult, right? The only person who I know who seems to have like got done really well with that, like, being as early as possible in that journey is Mufti Menk. Um, and it's hard to match that, man. Mm. I, I, I think, honestly, somebody who seems to be doing it well, and this is, this is a commentary on his uh, strategy, and I think it's very good, uh, that is Dawa Man, right? Yeah. Now, Dawa Man, uh, whenever I mention him, bro, I use him as an example quite a lot because he's actually very good at marketing. But people... He's people really all, marketing. Yeah. Like he's, he's, he's like Marmite, right? And most people, you know, have an issue with him. That's fine, me too, in a way. But he's very good at going after those non-practicing people, to be honest. Mm. Like he does things I'm not willing to do to get them. That's what I'm saying. You have to sacrifice what you're comfortable with to go to reach those people, right? So he might say, uh, here's these, you know, thousand pound trainers, come to the message, you can win them, right? Now, I can't get myself to do that. Like, I don't know, I feel shame about it. I feel like it's tacky. I don't know. But if I was serious about reaching those people, I would maybe potentially do those kind of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's doing it it really well. um, For Mm -hmm. like, like, uh, there's no one can deny that like Matting and the Masjid um, uh, 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 and the projects that he's working on that are like that, like are really affecting people, bro. Um, At the same time, I would, I'd, uh, I don't know how to consistently be early in on that journey, like you're saying, right? Like it's not natural um, to us, maybe. Yeah. Well, look yeah, at, but like it's not because maybe just looking at someone who has a big beard is like. Look at who. Mean? Look at who. Look at recently, bro. In recent mm. weeks, um, brother Adam Saleh, bro. Yeah. So he he has done what we've just been talking about. So he's mm. somebody who maybe. You know, and Allah knows best may have been associated more with, with Muslims that weren't practicing. Like his audience are probably a lot of them. They're familiar with Islam, like as a, as a cultural perspective, like the culture that is behind Islam, the culture yeah. that is behind being Arab or being from these you know communities. However, we don't we we could say that maybe the majority of his videos, at least of the most recent years, haven't been Islam focused. Mm. Now, suddenly he's taken he started to take his deen more seriously. However, he fully admits that he doesn't have, he says in his videos, especially when he was speaking to um, Ali Dawa, speaking to um, Imran, etc., that he doesn't actually know that much. He said that himself, do you know what I mean? So in that, he's resonating with his audience who may also not know that much, mm. right? And he took them with, on, uh, he took them on the journey with him. He spoke to Muhammad Hijab on his podcast because he's got one now, isn't he? Uh, he spoke to Imran on his podcast. He spoke to Ali Dawa on his podcast. Mm. And, it, and he suddenly brought all of these people that actually, um, you know, the thing is with America is that a lot of the audience are going to, a lot of Muslims in America, unfortunately, because it's such a spread out place. Like we like to compare American Muslims to us, right? We say, oh, how come loads of them are acting like this and we are you know, more familiar with these certain ideas and certain Islamic teaching stuff. It's because, bro, it's like getting a few grains of sand bro and just throwing it across this massive land space of course they're going to be very you know disconnected and stuff whilst predominantly a lot of muslims live in big cities and communities are closer and tight in it and have been here longer do you know what i mean so that's what we have the benefit of so yeah i don't know i feel like i feel like mufti menk is the the one who's like but you have to go to mufti menk bro that's my argument with, no. with mufti menk a lot of 
the, the Muslim, the non-practicing Muslim has, has to make a decision that I want to look into Islam and then go to Mufti Bank and mm. like search. Do you understand? He doesn't reach them. They have to search for him, bro. That's my, that's my perspective mm. on it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whilst with the, just the circumstantial thing about Adam Saleh is that people were watching him because of him being popular and, you know, popular YouTuber. And then he just took his audience into this Islamic mm. bubble that, that they, 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 they weren't mm. exposed to before. Do you understand? Mm. Mufti Bank, I to be me, if I wasn't practicing, bro, let's, 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 when I wasn't practicing, bro, I didn't know anything about Islam. I didn't know any of these speakers. I didn't know this thing existed, right? I haven't been practicing for that long, right? I'm 27 now. It must have been, I started looking into the dean at like 19, 18, 19, right? So I wouldn't argue it was that long. I didn't know any of this existed. The internet, the Muslim communities. In, but did I you didn't know, know Mufti Bank? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did. I did. So this may be the difference. But I, difference. I was so separated, bro, from the Muslim community that I wasn't even surrounded by Muslims. Right? I don't live in London or anywhere where there's a Muslim majority. Didn't know anything about it. My exposure to Muslims and Islam actually first started through Twitter. So everybody had Twitter locally, you know, non-Muslims. I started going on there. But then because I, uh, because I was, a, you know... I started seeing people tweeting about Islam and stuff. That got me hooked. Then I started, that's when I started searching. Mm. Then Akhi YouTube. Tweet was born. Oh yeah, Akhi Tweet was born, bro. <laughs> but I started searching on YouTube and then I had to, that was me making a conscious decision. That I'm going to go and look for Islamic knowledge or, is, you know, speakers mm. and stuff. Mm. So that's the jump. But, but do you know what? It depends on the community. Akhi, like if you grow up in London, you're a non-practicing Muslim in London, you're going to be seeing practicing Muslims everywhere. You're going to be seeing mm. brothers in thobes and, and you know what I mean? So that's the difference, you know? Yeah. You can be non-practicing, but very aware of Islam around you. Mm -hmm. you know that's I mean? a good so point, a actually, bro. Like, maybe in reaching the practicing people and, you know, whatever we can do, or like, I think Faisal does it much better than us because he's bringing people on who are like, you know, uh, very good at what they do in terms of Dao and stuff. Maybe by improving the practicing people, those practicing people, not online, not through media, but through just being in a physical place with non-practicing people, that's how they're going to uh, create the change. Because I do actually mm -hmm. think a lot of change happens on the ground through just face-to-face -face relationships, yeah. you know? Definitely. So, yeah. Faisal, before we wrap up, I want to ask you just some kind of quick things about your approach to, you know, making stuff, yeah? So Okay, quick fire round. Yeah. So, I mean, the answer might not be quick, but okay, Ads on your YouTube videos. What's the process oh. behind that? Oh, oh man, controversial. And the worms there, man. Uh, oh. I'm going to defer that question for now because I feel like I have to. I feel like there's a level of responsibility that has to be taken when answering it. So mm. I wow. recently so so like executive, man. That yeah, was yeah. Such a PR this guy's move. PC as hell, <laughs> <laughs> bro, man. That's, that's a responsibility, though, man. These are Islamic things, Zaki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, uh, I actually just got became a what they call it partner or whatever it is. YouTube partner. Um, yeah, like. I could have done it years ago, right? I just never even considered it. A month ago or something, I, I got it, I turned it on, and I only put ads at the end of the video, okay? I, because I, I, I heard that if you have ads on, YouTube will actually give you a little boost. So I thought, let me do experiment. And then also I found out that you can switch off all these categories of ads, stop them showing up. But after doing it for a month, I was like, you know what? Eat at the minimum, there's going to be like music in the ad. And then an, a video which is like B2B software ad, it's still going to have like, you know, women not dressed bright. So I just turned it all off like last week or something. Okay, anyway, next question. Faisal, I noticed that you don't actually, you avoid, you seem to avoid like controversy or getting too deep into things. Like what's, what's your thinking around that? I think it goes back to what I said about uh, who our consumer is and not trying to scare people away and understanding our audience. And it, perhaps for some people, Freshly Ground is all they've got. And so I have to remind myself of that ire that drives us because you, look, you're not going to please everyone. People are going to say, oh, you're too much like this. People are going to say, you're not enough like this. We get that now, bro. So I have to just be content with what my mission is and how we're doing it. And I have an amazing team around me. We talk about our mission a lot and we're very open and clear with it. And... Um, uh, and I'm content with that, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't please everybody. So, and so, so um, staying away from controversy, bro, I, I, don't think that's a, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I'm not saying that yeah. you're saying it is. Mm. But um, 
like I said, I think that our audience is a very specific type of audience and we're trying to make these small changes in them uh, and in ourselves. And these changes, though they are, seem small, they're massive, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. There's, 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 there's a reason is a hadith about the lying thing, mm-hmm. about... Um, stuff like um, going to the like we, you know we, we speak often in, in, in our podcast about like this serenity of going to Fajr in the masjid and, and things like that bro so um, yeah I, it goes yeah. back to what I was saying earlier I guess mm, yeah the mission yeah um, what about what I noticed is some podcasts they might only bring on guests that are how do you say it their flavor if you like mm-hmm. right their flavor but with you, uh, I see, obviously you, you are selective, but you're quite broad with your choices of, you know, you might have two guests on your podcast on different episodes that would, you know, go at each other basically. So, you know, what's the thinking about being, you know, kind of broad and open? I think that I try and think of it as who can we benefit from in conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we can learn something from everyone because people specialize in different fields. Um, so, so I suppose that's, that's that. When it, when it comes to the more Islamic side of things, um, I feel like I'm comfortable having Tim Humble on and I feel really blessed that he, we seem to be the go-to podcast that Alam he, he he likes to, uh, he always gives us time, right? And... Um, and we're cool with that, man. We don't need to start bringing on shuyukh and stuff like that because that's not what we, that's not our our mission, right? But like, I feel like when we bring on uh, Sheikh Tim, we have that element and he's a great all-rounder and he's and he, he works so well with a professional guy in brand, bro, because he, he has that level of knowledge. He's graduated in Medina in Hadith. He teaches Islam. He teaches Aqidah. He teaches Fiqh. He's an active imam. Um, or, or not actually man, but like as in um, uh, he does like khutbahs and stuff in the masjid and, and stuff like that and he teaches in the masjid um, uh, almost daily and so we have that element of someone who's a person of knowledge but at the same time bro he really relates to the people he's great at communicating and so so we love that and so having him on is great for us but, but we, we like We've had we get so many people suggesting us so many like mm. people of knowledge, which I'm so grateful for. But the thing is, I'm so low in knowledge, I'm so weak in knowledge, and I understand the implications of bringing someone on, um, and it being dangerous. And so, like over time, and we're still learning, but we're still going to make mistakes. But we found a so what seems to be a happy medium of of having someone like Sheikh Tim on, who, who people we've made very clear, like we 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 you know. Um, we enjoy having him on the podcast and uh, uh, we love having him on and asking him all these really in-depth questions that we don't know the answers to. And, but then again, outside of that, we like to have our conversations about how people can make changes. So we have people on who, like I said, are like specialized in psychology and just understanding the human brain and specializes in like right now I've got an episode with uh, the brother who you, you, you guys probably know Walid from Blackwood London. And that's just an element of like, I was intrigued as like how he built his business uh, you, and he used social media to, to change the branding of, of Oud. Right. Um, but that's not really going to do with Islamic teaching. So I don't, does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. What I understand is, it's about benefiting the audience ultimately. And when it comes to very, you know, Islamic related stuff, you have a go-to guy that you kind of trust and there might be other people equally good, but you just, because you can't do all that research, you just have him as your go-to. So bro, I'm very weak in knowledge. Do you know what I mean? And so that I'm comfortable. And, and at the end of the day, bro, you, you have to do something that will help you sleep at night. Yeah, I, 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 can, I, can, I can sleep at night, alhamdulillah. Mm, so. mm, mm. And then final one, bro. Um, I know this could be a long answer. It could be a whole conversation, but you know, even uh, for, for my business, Muslim CEO, like we try to, uh, you know, interview some really top people in terms of running organizations or businesses. You know, we have people like Hamza Tzortis on, um, Muhammad al-Sharif, et cetera. Um, but we, we always have this issue with, we, we, we know of some women that should be on. They're doing a great job. But then we, we have the issue because we do it with video and stuff like that. So I don't think you've ever had uh, females on, right? And maybe you'd be open to doing it audio only, but then it would mess up the, the consistency. So, you know, what's the thinking around that? 
Sure. So um, it's funny because I was actually speaking um, about this with somebody last night. <clears throat> So I've always been open to having this, uh, to, to, for people to ask this question. And a lot of people have asked me this question. We actually had this question asked to us by a sister mm. on uh, episode 100, uh, live on stage. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so we've always been open to answering it, right? Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not worried about the answer. Mm -hmm. And my answer is, uh, it's, like there's, it's like multifaceted, right? Yeah. So first of all, we created Freshly Grounded, right? And the vibe of, and the culture of Freshly Grounded was a couple of brothers having a chat, right? Relaxing, sitting back, having a laugh, having a chat. Mm -hmm. And that's the culture that we created. And we're fine with that because that's the culture we created. And that's, what, that's like the branding of our podcast, right? I'm mm -hmm. a brother. I find it easier to like sit with a brother, kick back, have a coffee, have a natter. And there's no like worry about me being a bit too loose or, or this, that, the other, right? Yes. Um, and that's the culture that we created, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm okay with that is because there's many non-Muslim podcasts that also have that same culture. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. There's a podcast called The Fighter and the Kid, which is about, um, uh, it's like this mixed martial artist and this comedian. And yes, mm -hmm. they've had some females, but for the most part, bro, it's always just like this culture of guys having a bit of banter. There's a, uh, a similar podcast called, um, uh, um, the, you know, like Mike, Mike Tyson's podcast. I can't remember the name of it. Un, what is it? Mike Tyson. Um, I didn't know he something. had one. Right? I didn't know he had one either. No. Yeah, Mike Tyson has a podcast where in his ranch and like he for the most part there's there's guys in there and the culture of it is guys having a chat and it's like um uh, uh you know true Jordy, true Jordy, he has a podcast. Mm -hmm. And like the cult the the culture of his podcast is that they're watching football, a couple of brothers, and I'm sure uh, a couple of guys, and I'm sure that they have female viewers, just like we have female viewers, and we love that we have female viewers, and we love that our podcast is suitable for yeah. all. But yeah. for the vision that's on the camera, what you're seeing on camera is it's like a window of what it's like as brothers having a chat, right? Yes. That's one aspect. Yes. The second aspect, of course, is the aspect of there's a lot more that goes into uh, mm -hmm having sisters on podcasts in the sense that we have to make sure that the sister's comfortable um, and with, with, and with that would come that we'd have to make sure that she has a mahram available and, and these are all things that you can um, like combat and especially now that we've got Skype episodes and like what we're doing right now mm -hmm. um, but the other aspect of it and, and people have said to us like there's, there's a lot that, there's a lot of benefit that the sisters can bring mm -hmm. why don't you have sisters on mm -hmm. and I, I agree there's a lot of benefit and that's why we support that we support if sisters wanted to create and we've even said on, in the past that we wanted to create a sister's version of freshly grounded we said that mm -hmm. in the past but we never managed to make it happen i'm actually um trying to figure out something similar right now mm. um but the 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 point is that we've, we we've mentioned that we would uh, the, a sister's version is needed right mm -hmm. um and we said that we support if, if 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 people create something like this like recently um there's a podcast in america um, I don't know much about it, I'll be honest, but there's an audio only podcast called Matcha Talk. There's two hit sisters uh, and they have a conversation. Just it's to, I, I've heard like 15 minutes of one episode recently. Um, and it sounds just like an episode of Fresh Land with me and Sam. And we, so I'm, I, I think people, because we don't have, a, haven't had a sister on, they think that we're anti sisters, we're against it, we don't agree with it, we don't think that sisters yeah. bring any value. And that we um and that we are sexist, right, or misogynistic. Mm. That's just that's assumptions, just yeah. And, and it's assumption that if people want to believe that, that's fine, bro. I can't help if people have like want yeah. to slander us, yeah. but yeah. um, that's just not the case. And so um, so this this podcast I'm talking about, Matcha Talk. Uh, the reason I came across it is because they tagged us on Instagram saying that they were discussing the freshly grounded card game, and I was like, oh, it'd be interesting to hear what their perception of it is. And so I listened yeah. to it, and then I ended up um getting in touch, and we sent them um we sent them our card games as a gift to say like, you know, um, cause they, they, had, they had said that at the time it was sold out. So they weren't able to purchase them. Mm -hmm. So we sent some to them for free. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the point is bro, is that if I was like anti that, we wouldn't do that kind of yes, thing. We of wouldn't course. say we support if sister wanted, we support it, but the culture of what we've created so far yeah. has the idea of it was this, mm -hmm. like, it was actually the idea it originally was me and Sam. So two yeah. brothers having an hour, just mm -hmm. like you guys, it was never even meant to be for, to have guests really. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, we did early on, like episode two and three, have guests, but it was even then it was just like, all right, let's bring in like this brother because we know him, Muslim Blau, Lats, these guys are friends of ours. But then we, the only time we started becoming very guest heavy was if you remember when Sam had his second child, and um, there was this big thing where he realized 
that raw like this is massive man like having one child is one thing but having two is 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 such a big difference and, and Muhammad, like, I'm yes, sure, uh, yeah, yeah Muhammad, you said the same thing to me as well and omar yeah, said the same thing bro. to me and so i believe it like um, i only have one child but um because of how many different people have said that at different times i believe it right and so sam had to take a massive hiatus from freshly grounded because he just found himself in a situation where he's running this massive empire of men's buyer. Plus he's now with two children. So he's like taking care of his oldest a lot of the time so that his missus can take care of the, um, the younger, uh, son, Suleiman. And so, um, uh, and so at that point, I didn't want Fisher Grounds to die out. So I started bringing on guests because I started doing one or two episodes by myself and it just weren't working out. Right. Mm. But the point is that the beginning was always, uh, like me and Sam So mm. that's I suppose The long answer And that's the yeah. truth And so yeah. ultimately Like we're not against it We're not unhappy. We're not like Saying that it's mm. wrong We're not saying that Females can't bring value I think females bring So much value to us As a society Bro in general bro Do you know what I mean Like of course. I've been brought up In a household of like um, <clears throat> I have three sisters um, And I've been brought up In a household Where we were raised In the house We were raised by my mom, um, And so I have a lot of respect uh, And understanding And love um, but I just mm. It's just The, I, the Freshly Grounded Was created like that And we just can't Please everyone bro Of course But yeah, if we were to do it we, People would be like Whoa well, like, Why aren't you doing video And, and why are you too Like You're a bit too like um, Relaxed mm. But the whole, whole culture Of Freshly Grounded is relaxed Like I'm yeah. Even I'm talking to you guys Right now bro I've got my shoes off <laughs> And I'm <laughs> chilling bro. Like, I've got my, my coffee here Like we're relaxing <laughs> But the vibe is very relaxed bro And I want Trust the audience To bro. feel relaxed When they're listening to us Yeah, yeah. Trust For sure man you know, I, I think with podcasts, it's, it's easier to do, to, to do, to make content in an Islamically acceptable way, right? Because ultimately that's what, that's what it's about. Like, I know you said you, you've got the, the culture of freshly grounded also is a reason you might not do it, but you know, I find it very, very interesting how Muslims who are really trying to stick to what's pleasing to Allah and how they try to navigate things because, uh, for, like one path, like Iman channel, I spoke to, uh, you probably know Abu Bakr from Iman Channel, right? Uh, oh, I love Abu Bakr. <laughs> yeah, amazing guy. Um, I went, we went Hajj together, that's how I met him. Um, uh, yeah, I remember they were explaining how they approach this topic. And it's, it's very, you know, they've got the shiuch who are advising them, you know, what the limit is and all that. But then they've got these little things like, uh, we will show women on camera but only for two seconds at a time or something like that. You know, they got these different rules where it's like, we want to include women, but we want it to be pleasing to Allah as well. You know? So it's like really, um, really interesting. And then we have to get creative to, to do things with Ihsan. Yeah, man. 100%. Okay, bro. I think we're, we're out of time now, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, I think my guest your... is, uh, Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, man. No, nah, no, nah, no uh, problem, bro. Alhamdulillah. Um, uh, guys, I really, really enjoyed this, man. I, I, um, I had such a lovely time. I, I love you guys, man. Honestly, Same. for the sake of Allah, I really, really oh. do. I, I, I really think a lot of you guys. And um, assalamu alaikum. My brother is just almost making a little appearance. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of love for you guys. I have a lot of love for my heist, and I hope that we can do some more stuff together in the future, inshallah. And um. Uh, yeah, man, let's 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 jump on some private chats and start some negotiating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Inshallah, bro. Jazakallah khairan for your time and well, for coming yeah. on, and uh, for having us two on as well uh, on Freshly Grounded. I think uh, tweet you're on twice, isn't it? So, alhamdulillah. Oh, I Keep it you up, one, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, I need you on Freshly Grounded because I don't think you quite made the cut for Freshly Grounded. I think you were on my personal YouTube channel. No, I did one of each. Yeah. Really. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. Inshallah, we'll we'll uh, be be in conversation ongoing until you reach that billion dollar mark. Yeah, yeah inshallah, man. Inshallah. Um, I, I, like I said, brother, love you guys. May Allah bless you guys. Put barakah in your projects. May Allah give you um, good in this world and the next. May Allah yeah, strengthen Jamie, your yeah. bond with each other. May Allah strengthen all our bonds with each other. Amen. And uh, may He protect you guys and your families and your children. I mean. And uh, yeah, man, let's 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 keep this going. Let's do it again, inshallah. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdik. Shalom. La la la. Anta astaghfiruka. Tuwwalik. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.